couple slides. Uh, so why you trying to give me occupation? My nigga, I ain't hate. Nah, and my nigga, I ain't lazy. But I know hoagies in some cold blooded killers. Right, that's a thing. So why should I be paid? I said he pulled crime, can't pull crime, can't pull crime, slow crime, slow crime, pull crime, pull crime. Said he pulled crime, pull crime, pull crime, slow crime, slow crime, pull crime, pull crime. Said he pulled crime, pull crime, pull crime, slow crime, slow crime, pull crime, pull crime. Said he pulled crime, pull crime, pull crime, slow crime, slow crime, pull crime, pull crime. Ain't my nigga, I ain't hate. I feel uh, like Babylon and generates PA With clear sense, uncommon, can you see straight? Freeze frames by the blocks in the deep state Deep fake DNA, I'm mobbing with the think tank Be on the block with the guards where the beast done Who we'll makes it lot for a log, get your beast stung Freeze frame, make it hard for bombers roll through That hating energy get bought for QB bone You work a third of the day to get the shame Yeah, we got it like the murderers and rapists Welcome, 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 everyone. Welcome to Thought Crimes. This is your girl, Sensei, and I'm here with. Hey, yo. <laughs> All right, yo. Hello, what's up, y'all? This is your man, Pete Solo, in the building. What's good? What is good? What is good, everyone? Of course, if this is your first time listening to us, uh, we go by the name of Thought Crimes, too, by the way. Slinging heavy in the game. And, um,. Uh, we here, right? We here, unlike Russell yeah. Simmons. <laughs> Gotta keep that in mind. <laughs> unlike Bali, Russell Simmons. Bollywood. Yeah, yeah, unlike Russell Simmons. Of course, this is your man Prince Solomon P. Solo along here with your girl Sincere Ignorance. Y'all, y'all know what time it is. Shout out to the wonderful people time, that decided so to slide into the chat too, by the way. We are here. And we're continuing. We are absolutely continuing the ongoing coverage and saga and the dissection of the individual known as Puffstein. As you guys know who that is, right? It's, it's Puffstein for the most part, you know. And, and we, we're going to have to just continue to break this down. But um, Bollywood Russell, it, it, he's in. Um, he's been served some papers. Now, if you all recall, uh, Russell Simmons tried to make his slide out into the media not too long ago i mean he was going to have a, a very wonderful interview he and he was going to explain he himself he was getting away. He absolutely thought, and then he thought he was getting away you know kimora lee was just going to die in an explosion right <laughs> and call his daughters bitches and yeah. thought he was get away with it all on the behalf of puffstein we got to talk about mr puffstein out there in the game 
Too. And I, I agree. Look, just before we even get started, there's a couple things we have to address before we get into the nitty gritty of these yes. news. Okay. People say, why? Why should we discuss these black men? They're black men. Yes. They're the fall guys. Yeah. Couple things here. They decided to take that fucking position. They decided to portray the black community and say they got there only by hard work, not being on their backs. Hard okay? Work. And they were the ones who decided to bite the hand that was feeding them. That's not our problem. Cause thought crimes aren't no sellouts. You and the think tank, you're not sellouts. Diddy could have spent 20 years building an army over a hundred thousand men there supporting him and protecting him, but instead he was allegedly fucking them. All so right. that's that's not our fault. And then also just to go to Mr. Bollywood of uh, Russell Simmons, who gave over the keys to hip hop. He was ahead of Run DMC, important moments of hip hop. He gave over the kingdom to other groups of people. And then Cuban Gun Jr. We already know was <laughs> show me the money. <laughs> show me the money. Well, I want to start off this way. You know, I had a chance, and um, I saw a clip from the Breakfast Club, and. Um, they, you know, just the sad violins, and I'm starting to hear this as a talking point from the mainstream media. Well, let's just say the corporate sponsored media, you know, the ones that have to tell you to vote for Hillary Clinton and vote for Ross Perot. Or, well, no, not Ross Perot, Bob Dole. Or, no, not even Bob Dole. Let's, whoever, another dead politician. I heard that Joe Lieberman just passed away not too long ago, right? I right. think that was today. A lot of people right? saying rest in peace. Joe Lieberman, <laughs> Mr. Flip Flopper. I'm going to switch left, switch left, switch left, left, right, left, right. The original Mick Romney. Right. <laughs> Here's the thing about it. This is what I want to say concerning the likes of Puff Stain. So I watched the uh, the Breakfast Club and um, Two Tone. He said, uh, "This is what he said. Well, well why, why are him and DJ Envy? Well, why are people saying who's next? Like, why, why would you want more victims? I said, well, well why would you want more victims to have victory? I mean, why, I, let, why let, did let's, you let's give a, a underage girl drink? You mean, why would you want us to uncover more victims? Why would more victims need to be uncovered? I'm seeing this. Remember now, we told you all they will try to find a way to not talk about Diddy. They didn't want to touch the subject. Right? They did their rumor report. They didn't really want to delve into what went on with Diddy. Remember, this is the same platform that called Christopher Columbus. <laughs> My bad. I keep saying that, man. Columbus Short. They called him a snitch. Remember that with the rumor report that was in the thumbnail that was on top of the title of the thumbnail. Now, if you go so, go back and look at it, it's one of the most uncomfortable rumor report Breakfast Club clips I've ever seen in my life. And they said, like, well, well, why in envy? He says, well, why would you want more victims? Well, why, why would we need to hide more predators? This has nothing to do about wanting more victims when the general public, i.e. the hip hop listeners say, wait a minute now, who is next? That's a reasonable question, right? That is a reasonable, honest question. That's not a situation where people are like, oh man, I sure can't wait to see such and such get in trouble. What the public is saying, we don't know what the hell y'all are doing. I mean, we didn't know anything about Cassie's report until it came out. Now we see Lil Rob, which Diddy, dumbass Diddy, he, that was the only one he came out because I guess it was a black nigga. He come out and say, oh, I ain't paying nothing. This one, this ain't, nah, we about to go to war. And then the feds said, okay. That's Diddy fault. He's like, I got to pay Cassie. Fuck that nigga. <laughs> Fuck that little raw bitch. And he ain't good enough. Yeah, we own your publishing for this uh, bummy ass album. Yeah. Now look at him on, on the run, allegedly. Yeah. Got, he had to give up all of a vault. Yeah, it was so getting worse. You got his, a coochie uh, brought in. Talking about pink cocaine and all this other shit. It's getting really wild up here in these streets. No, and the reason why I want to take, I want to speak to this specifically. Because we had Who's Next in our title. And then the Breakfast Club said, well, yeah, for people that are saying Who's Next, listen. You may be next, nigga. Shut, shut up. up. <laughs> shut up for you, you be next. That's why y'all don't want to listen. <laughs> Listen! Y'all niggas keep fucking around, fucking around, fucking around, fucking around, around stuck in the ground. Concerning Puffstein, <laughs> I think a lot of you all should just shut the fuck up. You know, because that's the problem with y'all lames in the mainstay media. Y'all always want to be on top of the alternative niggas. Y'all always want to absorb their wave and try to be in the way of them, but then y'all don't want to talk about shit. It's like a nigga rushing you off the stage and he can't dance. It's like you telling jokes and a nigga talking over you and he ain't funny. I 
just want to put that out there because as you all can see now the narrative is oh why would you want more victims bitch shut the fuck up hey i got a question since most of you industry uh, niggas knew Nipsey Hussle was going to get killed next, uh, why didn't y'all stop that? Pimp, pimp. Why didn't you stop that next? Why don't y'all go ahead and talk about them black car killers y'all got in the industry that y'all activate them little demonic niggas at any time? Who's next? Right? I'm not, we listen, this is not about playing any games. We're getting this trafficker the hell up out of here. Then they would, oh my God, then I heard Envy say something stupid like this because he always says something stupid. But he says something stupid like this. Did they? <laughs> you get that nostril flaring. Did they? Did they kick in? Did they kick in Harvey Weinstein's door like that? I don't know, bitch. You didn't talk about Harvey Weinstein. No, only Dark Crimes was talking about Harvey Weinstein. Y'all was sucking his dick allegedly. Now we're not talking about the only ones in media. We're just talking about concerning the hip hop, hop stage. Yeah, yeah. And shouts out to the rest of the alternative hip hop media. They covered it as well. But we're saying here concerning you niggas. Call out the white boys then, if you feel it's unfair. We waiting. Breakfast Club, call them white boys out. Yeah, no, now you don't want to touch it. Yeah, I don't want to touch it. You touch. You was over there trying to touch little mama's dead mother. You was all over there being disrespectful. Sniffing people's chairs and butts. At the time when Monique was making sense to niggas, right, before all this other stuff with her son, right, at the time you was all in the way over there, right? And then, but see, now it's, it's one of you all niggas. You know, what, what happened to the most dangerous platform, the most dangerous show on the planet? Pimp, pimp. What happened to that shit? I just don't want to see. We get, we see the, all of a sudden, two tones is a planeteer now. Oh, I, you know, I just hate to see. Oh, mother pearl ass niggas. <laughs> oh dear, mama niggas now. All of a sudden. All right, big mama asshole niggas. <laughs> then don't cover it. Don't cover it. Y'all was soft with Candace Owens. Then y'all come up here with this ditty shit. Who are you niggas? You all niggas are unrecognizable like Tom Cruise in Vanilla Sky. All right? So, that being the case, I want to give a shout out to all the alternative media that are going to continue to talk about this freely. And I'm so happy that a lot of this democratization has been taking place because a lot of you industry niggas, and we showed y'all with David Banner out the gate when he was trying to do what he did to us. Y'all always want to lay y'all dying old sloppy asses on top of new niggas they don't want to talk about diddy now all of a sudden then on top of that what i didn't like with they self-hating asses then they reverse engineered the conversation and made about black people wishing for a downfall of a nigga that was shooting black people in the stomach allegedly in bathrooms the mind fucks they trying to do with us it's not happening Dark crimes were not no pushovers. Nobody can intimidate us. Even people trying to intimidate us about the whole yay and Nick Funtes bullshit. You can't do it. Now, someone did bring some interesting information, though, of saying that yay is a part of knocking all these niggas down who's been fucking over the black community. So I will give things a chance to be played out. Y'all niggas keep fucking around, fucking around, fuck around, get stuck in the ground. But yay needs to fire Milo. You cannot preach about the children thing. And you have Milo sitting around doing whatever he wants. He needs to be fired. Look, I don't know what the hell's going on with Ye. I don't know. I just, we, look, I have no idea so much of what's going on with Ye that the nigga showed up in our chat one day. And he was saying skeet skeet or Pete Pete something concerning Peter. Now, that being the case, I'm moving on. I don't know what's going on with Ye, but I will say this, Cindy and I will be back. We will be back on Monday. Monday, depending on what happens, because allegedly rumors are tintillating that uh, Drake is supposed to be doing something on the weekend, right? Or not, not the singer, but about the weekend or on the weekend. So we will more than likely probably, if, if it's breaking news, y'all know how it is. We'll go live. We'll let you guys know because I know folks, was they said they want us to continue to cover this situation with Drake. But I, I actually feel this does have a lot to do with Kanye. I think, you know, what, what has been activated with Future... Uh, look, they got Drake on stage screaming. Can't no nigga fuck with me. I said, well, I mean, it sounds like the niggas are fucking with you, Drake. I mean, you know, but that being the case, look. Yeah, yeah we'll see what's going on with Ye and Candace and Nick and this whole thing against uh, 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 this whole movement that they claim they're about. We'll see who's the real and who is the fake soon enough. Yeah. But going back to Puffstein, as you stated, Prince. Yes. These niggas on this uh, mainstream media trying to guilt trip black people 
about a dusty ass nigga that possibly got pot killed a dusty ass nigga that was allegedly trafficking people within our community a dusty ass nigga that was still in publishing from other niggas a dusty ass nigga in a lawsuit allegedly who shot another nigga like come on you cannot guilt trip the black community about Puffstein, aka Diddy's own debauchery. He also got snow bunnies out here pushing weight, allegedly. <laughs> well, yeah, you got the black bunnies and the snow bunnies. And listen, I, I just wanted to make that clear because we're definitely going to continue on into the conversation and, and continue to break this down. But y'all know how we are. The bullshit media that they're spinning, it's spinning that bitch right back in the right direction. You know, I saw Envy Two Tone up there, and then I'm seeing some of the other people out there, with the exception of Torre. Torre was honest. He actually had a family member that did an internship with Diddy, and then the family member quit. And he asked his family member, yo, man, why did you quit? And the guy told him, that's right, you heard it, guy. The guy told him that Diddy said, look, um, you either come home with me tonight, or you don't get a chance to continue to intern. And the guy said, well, he put the brakes on that. So that actually shows you how demonic Diddy allegedly has been. And it's not like we haven't seen him cut up on camera. And now that they're saying that the mother of 50 Cent's child has been on the payroll in the freak offs too as well. So, you know, allegedly you got the Chris Lighty situation, right? That kind of goes on in the street background of hip hop. And then now you have Diddy being a very toxic Scorpio implicating the mother of 50 Cent's child um, in these freak off sessions. So now you can probably understand a little bit more of the motivation behind Diddy not letting his foot up. And even in 50 Cent's comment section, you know, and it's a very hyper personalized relationship because they got a really thick static with each other, as Diddy does have with a lot of Negroes in the industry, but specifically 50 Cent, right? The thing is, even if you see in the comment section with 50 Cent, you see some of the black folks, particularly the black men. I'm going to say this, brothers. If somehow Diddy getting his just due karma affects you psychologically, your self-esteem is shot. I'm going to keep it real with you. All right. Your self-esteem is shot. You know, we I talked to my, my father or at the time, my my grandfather. And I, you know, I used to ask him, you know, you know, what was it like when Malcolm X got shot? You know, what was it like when, you know, Megda Evers ended up dead? What, what happened? How did you feel about Martin Luther King? And, you know, they said, boy, son, that was the most depressing day in my life. Those were the most depressing days because they were fighting for, quote unquote, black people's freedoms. They were challenging systems and of oppression. They were putting their life on the line. And, you know, as, as my grandfather said, you know, just to see Malcolm X, he said the way they did him like a dog. He said he was depressed. And my father said the same thing, my mother. And I'm sure if you all talk to your mothers and fathers and, and grandpappies as well and grandmamas, they'll tell you the same thing. I'm going to tell you this. When I see the feds kicking Diddy's doors in, Prince Solomon does not wake up in the morning and be like, damn, man, they oh, got man, they one. Got... You know what I felt you like know... that? When I saw innocent black men get shot and killed, that's when I felt like, damn. Yeah. You get what I'm saying to your point? When, when, when we saw people in our community who were worth something, the people of Flint, Michigan, who there were whistleblowers go. about the what the dirty-ass, dingy-ass uh, governor did to them beautiful people, that's the people I wake up thinking about. And, of course... If you are a wealthy black man who are and you're really for your community, I'm gonna feel bad if something happens to you too. Of course, we could try to we should be trying to protect each other, but Diddy ain't one of them. Yeah, so you do have um, you do have a very interesting narrative going on here, and I call it Stockholm syndrome. Mm, say Sto that shit again. It's Stockholm syndrome, and I'm gonna say <laughs> Stockholm niggas. Yeah, the Breakfast Club, you know, Two Tone and DJ Envy uh, are long. They've been there long enough to have Stockholm syndrome. That's my personal opinion. You know, as far as them rotating host out and things of that nature, I don't know the dynamics there, but specifically with them two, we have seen them publicly smooth with Diddy. So it's Stockholm Syndrome. You cannot call yourselves the most dangerous show on earth, and you can't even have a conversation about Diddy. This is Stockholm Syndrome, and I'm gonna be honest with you. Some of the rest of, some of the black folks, specifically the men, cause y'all know we had a, you know, Jim Jones cousin call in, right? Threatening thought crimes, allegedly, right? Threatening thought crimes. I, like I said before, shout that's the last shit I care about. Diddy, I am not under the sigh up mind control of the program of Diddy, the CIA programming of the likes of Diddy, the CIA programming of the likes of the dope game, the drug federation. 
Have I listened to the music? Absolutely. But when I get up and if something happens with them, I understand it is what it is. I have a healthy self-esteem. Sin has a very healthy self-esteem. So we only look at these people as entertainers. Now, when other information comes out, that's another side of the game. But if you find yourself getting depressed, you know, like I saw on The Breakfast Club this morning, they look depressed. For what? They look depressed. I'm going to be honest with you. They look depressed. I says, what is this? And then if you think about this, it's a great litmus test. Scotty Beam just got on Joe Budden. She said, yo, you was all down my neck about Juicy Smollett. Yeah, right? Yeah, Juicy Smollett. he responded to that too. Right? And she said, you can't even say anything about Diddy. But I'll be honest with you. I get what Scotty Beam is talking about. And we got to keep it real. Scotty Beam has always been 10 toes down, period. Whether people fucked with her opinion or not. That's hip hop. Well, she didn't say nothing about Diddy either until now, too. So I wouldn't say 10 toes down. Well, I'm going to say this. But well, I still get your overall Say point. don't undercut my comment. <laughs> get your ass out the way. Don't you ever do that. <laughs> I'm going to tell you something. Ain't nobody saying nothing about this. We just had the feds <laughs> kick in. Diddy's doors. In the door. Right? Oh, we just Papa said, don't help me no more. Yeah, think about this, y'all. <laughs> we had more conversations about Young Buck being caught in a hotel with transsexuals. It was a whole dissecting conversation. We had more conversations about whether Meg the Stallion was shot or not. I'm just being honest with you all. This is the biggest story right now, as appropriately as it should be. When Envy said, did they kick in Harvey Weinstein's door? Well, your platform is so unintelligent, you didn't even try to have the conversation to see if it happened. But they did. They did. You saw they took that old uh, busted up spine, right. brutal face, a cracker, and threw his ass in prison. Y'all didn't talk about how many dead witnesses ended up in the same week of the trial, though. Y'all didn't talk about Jeffrey Epstein. If y'all care about white people meeting justice so bad, open up your fucking mouths and talk about it then. Because y'all some punk-ass bitches trying to scare off the black community or make them feel guilty about a raggedy nigga who's the reason why we have a black financial deficit. He was supporting the Democratic Party. He was never supporting our community. He didn't support reparations. He didn't support black entrepreneurs. He was stealing from them, shooting them allegedly, fucking them allegedly. So I don't want to hear all this. I feel bad for a black man and his kids being arrested. Y'all niggas don't feel bad when y'all be drugging them bitches at them parties, right? Well, allegedly, excuse me. Allegedly, when y'all be drugging people at parties, yeah. right? Or kids were being trafficked or going to Flavor of Love camps, allegedly. I ain't see y'all feel bad in your heart about that. Y'all always feel bad when another demon is taken down. That's when y'all feel bad. Yeah, so that's why I said what I said about Scotty. No, I actually support her statement. Look, I don't care if people, how long it takes. Outside of 50 Cent, he the only one really been going hard from the very beginning since almost damn near 13 years ago. No, we're not doing that. Everybody, listen, even with Joe Budden, Joe Budden was ready to go right back in with the stupid narrative about let's discuss this old hag ass case with Meg Thee Stallion. I'm going to tell you something. It's over. It's over. Nobody cares about it. You know, I, listen, I, I'm going to be honest with you. I get tired of all of these people try to act like they're so unfiltered. They're the most dangerous shows, and you can't get them to talk about anything. Then guess what happens when it rolls out on T.D. Jakes? It's going to be more silence. You made a great point. Look, I like Joe Button's show. I like his cast members. You know, he gives very good information from time to time, and I didn't like what Charlamagne did with him with his Spotify deal. But Joey calling her a feminist and all that other shit, so what? She didn't commit a crime. I mean, you, there's a difference between somebody being annoying and somebody being Diddy. Well, I mean, we can call Scotty Beam a feminist. Fine, who gives a fuck? But we can't call Diddy a predator, possibly? That's what I said about this hip-hop shit. It's a joke. The, the energy is where the alternative media is. The energy is where you guys have your conversations on your jobs, on your lunch break. The energy is where you and your family get together, where you and your friends get together and y'all starting up your podcast. I don't care about, I'm going to be honest with y'all, especially from the stuff I observe personally. Please, all you got to do is look at the hip hop media right now. Look how Usher took his silly ass right over there and took pictures with Russell Simmons. Well, he did get served papers right after. So ho hopefully Usher's a split yourself. <laughs> We're yeah. still Illuminati button prints. Usher snitched. <laughs> uh, uh, Usher snitched. <laughs> 
so but also I just thought you have the situation oh, here just to say this um in the light of uh, P Diddy I'm, I'm gonna run this back and then I'm gonna let you go do what you gotta do Sam but even with Young Miami was out here moving cocaine for Diddy that's what, that's, what, that's, what they, that's what they say that's in the peppers right that's what she said I never tell on you daddy Right now, she said, "I sell a brick for you, Daddy." Yeah, now I never young, tell on you, Daddy. Young Miami was all on the internet shitting on regular civilians because that's criminal behavior, nigga. You a criminal. You get what I'm saying? And this is what has murdered hip hop. Well, now we know why her friend uh, Santana said uh, he would clap academics' cheeks. Yeah, well. How many? How many cheeks did this? Did this? This person. Has clapped over the years at a Diddy function, allegedly. <laughs> yeah, so maybe academics had a right to cry. <laughs> maybe they told him how they were going to do it. <laughs> maybe it was a flashback. Yeah, so, you know, <laughs> that being said, listen, that, that's all I want to say concerning the whole media coverage of Diddy. Look, like I told you all, there's things I think Joe Budden should have fought like hell to get his stuff from uh, Spotify. You know, of course, Spotify used black people in that situation. They used them like the mule, just like they had up there with uh, the Daily Wire and Candace Owens to get up, try to get all that black rage. And it didn't really work like that. But when you talk about what's been going on in the media, the reason why people are saying you all shows and podcasts are boring because y'all aren't being transparent. But many of you all can't. Look, have you noticed this real quick? I'm going to put this out there. Nobody has said anything about the Diddy situation. That's why that stupid nigga from Harlem calling in talking about Diddy still active. I said, but it's jetting. <laughs> the fuck you talking about? Fuck you coming at us about it for. What you talking about, nigga? The reason why I say that, it ain't that Diddy is active. It's that people don't know what information does Diddy have or what is being collected. What file? What folder? That's what they're trying to figure out right now. You know, so uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, also I want to uh, share the clip here with uh, uh, Luke, Luther Campbell, Uncle Luke. Uh, I think what he did, uh, it was a great breakdown of what he said. Uh, and then we're going to we're going to keep moving on forward with this. But uh, clearly that Diddy has some excellent backing. Go ahead. Sam. Oh, one thing I will say, because I did watch Joe Button's response to what he was irritated with is like, if you got something to say, say it. You bring it up the, jo the Juicy Smollett situation trying to indirectly tie me to diddy but if i haven't done anything don't try to put my name with diddy and i think that's the thing that was getting him upset which if he doesn't have anything to be exposed about with diddy then i don't think that's a that's a you kind of bringing up your own personal grudge match and trying to use the diddy thing as a spirit bomb to kind of get joe put up but if he don't have nothing then why do that so it depends. I know, but that's what can be argued against the whole Meg the Stallion thing about that. She has some sort of nefarious plot to lie to get a, a nigga wrapped up that clearly is on record beating other black men. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, that yeah, one. So I was like, I don't. That's see why it. I say like. I don't that's see the Megan the the Megan uh, conspiracy. I don't. I don't see it. That's all I'm saying in that direction. You know, because again, the media that listen, everybody that calls at people at the right point in time, it seems like they get the most criticism. That's why there's church mob silence right now across platforms. All of them. All of them. They keep talking about like, well, I didn't see, I didn't see this, that, and that. And I'm going to say this too. Let this teach you niggas about racism. Because y'all, you know, y'all, every time y'all get y'all, y'all first M's, y'all always like to tell. Shit on niggas. The commoners, <laughs> there is no racism. It's classism. And I Because uh, I live out in Calabasas. Right? Y'all love to do those things. Right? Let me tell you something about racism. Really, Scott had to watch Diddy get locked up. No, no, he didn't get locked up. But he he had to watch uh, Diddy Holmes get uh, invaded. He saw him on the curve. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Here's the thing about the racism, and I'm just going to point this out, and we're going to move on forward here. All right? The reason why these niggas are getting drugged at the level that they're getting drugged, because at the end of the day, they're black people. Diddy did the most. Diddy is a clear example of doing too much. <laughs> doing too much. A cokehead, allegedly. A drug addict, allegedly. Out here being violent. Operating with impunity, right? I'm above all these black niggas. That's really what you feel. I'm above all these broke black niggas. Then when you get drugged, and because Help. they can make money. Help! Yeah, we told y'all about black death is very lucrative. We saw it with BLM, a multi-billion dollar platform 
people made so much money off of BLM. People, actually more non-black people made more money off of BLM than actually black folks to keep it real with y'all. All right. But here's the thing, because I see I'm seeing it all across social media, even like I said, with the Breakfast Club, when they was up there crying and why this and we didn't do this to us. Just like we didn't do that to Cuban. Black people didn't do this to us. We didn't do this to ourselves. Diddy was out here on camera. Diddy allegedly has done so much activity that there's an amounting level of evidence against him. But here's the thing about it for all of you niggas out here that like to touch your money and be toxic and all this other stuff. It ain't got nothing to do with that. Look. If let's say I'm a racist, I don't give a fuck if you say I'm a white Jew, uh, Anglo, whatever, somebody white. Shit, if I can hide behind this black ass nigga that been out here dancing around, cutting up on camera like a monkey, then shit, that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna pay. I'm going to pay the media. I'm gonna make sure the media through the public relations connections, or if I know the head of that network, put Diddy out there. Cause remember when Harvey Weinstein went down, all of that got hit behind Bill Cosby. Ladies and gentlemen, there are a bunch of other executives facing, including Jimmy Iovine, facing sexual assault charges as we speak right now. But let's be real, though. Here's the other side of, quote unquote, the culture. If you put that out there over and over, at the end of the day, folks are going to be like, eh, I don't care. You put Diddy out there because, again, with such magic talisman for the culture, it's going to generate interest. Because Diddy wanted his face to be seen everywhere. The thing about being the face of something is when you're the uh, fall guy or woman, your face will also be everywhere. It's that simple. We all know Leonardo DiCaprio was at the white parties and um, all these other big time actors and actresses that if their name came out, they'll be ran through the mud too like Johnny Depp was. Johnny Depp is popular. That's why his particular divorce case and domestic violence and him and that other chick, Amber Heard, going back and forth. It was so huge because he's the face of something. Some of y'all just think, oh, it's only because the person's black. No one in mainstream America gives a fuck about Harvey Weinstein. His story was only juicy because of the people he allegedly raped. Angelina Jolie tried to touch Lupita Nyong'o. He tried to touch famous people that everybody know about so that's why his his was indirectly juicy Gwyneth Paltrow ain't nobody care about Harvey Weinstein by himself just like most mainstream America don't give a fuck about Jimmy Iovine they care about 50 though they care about Eminem they care about Dr. Dre that's one of the one of the wins of not being as visible as other people yeah you get to move that power in silence so that's cute. I mean, you know, the de facto thing about what about the white man? Uh, yeah, I actually think that's for this particular moment here concerning someone like Diddy, right? I actually think this is applicable, you know, like, and I think it's applicable in the sense that you're crying. What about the white man? Look, I'm going to keep it real with you. There's a good chance more than likely that if you had ran into these people on a bad day, a bad transit that they will more than likely hurt one of your family members because of their flesh and they feel they can get away with it and the thing about this with some black people be like all right dog let's go and clean up the community black people will complain some black folks will complain we have a lot of notable black personalities that are celebrity black celebrity black hollywood adjacent doing the most complaining we got some people that have Stockholm Syndrome and they were susceptible to the social engineering. They're crying a little bit in the comment section, but most black folks online are kind of like, look, bro, if I mean, he was out here doing something crazy, he need to be punished. We don't need to put a special black privilege title on top of every goddamn thing. Sometimes people are just fucking dirty. That's it. But a lot of black celebrity adjacent, black celebrity Hollywood adjacent personalities hosts an influencer online they're the ones trying to spin this narrative that well how are we excited about what happens with diddy actually no if anything black people for the most part they're actually more they're surprised that it is alleged to be more debaucherous than it is even meek mill's stupid ass this stupid nigga this is a stupid nigga right this is a special type of stupid this boy ain't bright at all now, Meek Mill going to get his silly ass up there with them struggle braids in his hair from 1997. And he going to say this dumb shit. And this is what I told you all about social engineering. Even he got socially engineered cognitive dissonance that goes in his head. He's going to say something like this. 
well, I want to move from America because they're trying to always tear the black man down. I said, yeah, after you didn't made your pro black gun violence records and you made millions of dollars off of it, Mandela. And they don't want you over there in Ghana. You didn't even respect uh, the African nations. You over there in the in the headquarters sitting in the president's uh, seat and shit. Just uncouth and just retarded. It doesn't matter if if they take you out of the trough. It don't matter if they take you out of the field and bring you into the house. Meek Mill is still a pig. It don't matter if he over in Africa. He's still a pig. Yo, don't kick that black pro-black man shit. After you done rapped insanely about just killing black men all the time. And you've been on social media about who you gonna have jumped. Who you gonna have killed. You told academics that you gonna have a green light on his ass. And then you gonna say you almost you almost hated your people because what the black female judge did. <laughs> your ass is a criminal though. <laughs> what the fuck you talking about? You a fucking criminal, Meek. And you hang with criminals. And, and you hang with white criminals that own you. You have uh, Michael Bubin. Talking about you fucking suck me, jump, jump, jump. I mean, like, that's some embarrassing shit for you. I don't say it embarrass my community because I know uh, we see videos every day with white people getting smacked when they starting shit with black people. But some of you industry niggas are embarrassing yeah, to so, yourselves and to other industry niggas. So when Meek Mill was talking about, yeah, I want to get out of America because he just tried to put the black men back. Nigga, how many times have you tried to tear black men down? Even the half black men like Drake. <laughs> and we We and didn't see Drake we didn't see Meek Mill try to tear more black men down publicly than any other group of people. I've never seen Meek Mill do he never he never challenges no one else. Every time you see Meek Mill, he we saw him on camera with his fat rhinoceros butt bodyguards running down on Safari. Let's be real, Meek Mill. Shut the fuck up. This is what I'm talking about though. Right, these are these are what you call goofies in the street. All of these people, these are all goofies in the street. So him up there talking about, I want to now, now I want to get out of America because now, now, now that they about to prosecute Diddy, now I want to leave. And even when they talk <laughs> about Revolt, man, they taking his company. Everybody knows Revolt was not making any fucking money. Who they had over there that was a star, just 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 making money and running through Revolt. Revolt was a Ponzi scheme to begin with. Like let's let well, allegedly say allegedly right. allegedly, <laughs> I mean like, allegedly, but let's not act like Revolt was uh uh Death Row Records, okay? And maybe it was at his height. No, I'm talking about the revenue part. Oh no. Oh yeah, the revenue. Well, the first part. thing he told you all it was black media. Then he put an Indian woman in charge. That's <laughs> motherfucker. Stay the hell away from me, here. Now Meek Mill want to go. Now he pro Africa. Now Diddy about to be prosecuted. Like, like brother, it's, it's, you going too far, dog. Well, I, I, I'm glad. Also, thank you for the news lab that you said a black person did buy Revolt. Hopefully, it's a free black person. What it says is is the 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 shape uh the shape moisture brother. That's what they're claiming. Oh, yeah. oh, the essence brother. Yeah, maybe he can bring Black Lightning back. Yeah, please, please get bring Black Lightning back on yeah. uh uh on some type of, of Revolt or something. That was a good show. So, look, the thing is this, you all. It, it's a joke, and um, we're going to keep moving forward. We're going to keep always talking like we're speaking. We Now that it, we, we're speaking like this, I don't want to be a narcissist. I don't want to be that. I, please, Lord knows. But when you have people now that they want to, you know, okay, some folks are trying to edge out because, it. look, I mean, once you see the feds kind of kick in the doors and you hear RICO, which, you know, people get it confused. It's a classification. It is a category for a bunch of criminal acts, right? That's what it is in itself. Then you got this stuff about Diddy and, and Young Miami and moving cocaine and all this, 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 all this weird stuff going on. Now, the other side is this. There is no more money to be made for these people. I want to say that again, because there's a lot of what Uncle Luke uh, I agree on. But I also feel the, the, the bottom line is the dollar, the almighty dollar. Right? Diddy has not been able to generate nothing. Donuts. Donuts. For 10 years, he was trying to get millennial rappers to go over there. All he got was French Montana. <laughs> <laughs> Drake said no. Kendrick said no. Everybody said no. It's the only reason why we got a bunch of albums from French Montana. Huh? <laughs> 
<laughs> well, he, had, he had MGK over there. He had nobody. He didn't have no Wale at the time when he was out, no Big Sean. Nobody. Did he had no one to continue his run with? So make no mistake now. I, I want this to be clear. I, I want you guys to kid I want you all to continue to live you all's lives. And it's very important for you all to see these types of things. Because sometimes with this th these oligarchs and, and, and these people that are tyrants, they'll have you believing like, man, damn boy, shh, there ain't no golden rules in this universe. As you can go to our Patreon where B More and Sin and I we break it down, but B More did a great, fantastic job when she was talking about the actually the the last day of victims coming forward and taking down predators was the day it was the day that they kicked in diddy's doors in fact that live stream is up on our patreon right now where be more breaks everything down okay just to say that but I, I want you guys this is very important to see because don't let these mainstream media heads try to spin you in the wrong direction because that's what they're trying to do well i don't even know if they know where to go with it because i saw it on the breakfast because they kind of look stupid but for the longest you all have been told you were a fool because you wouldn't sell your souls. Y'all wouldn't give up no butt, man or woman. Y'all wouldn't give up no mouth. Y'all Y'all wouldn't give up no front. Y'all wouldn't give up your broke. artistry, right? Absolutely. You know, we had all types of people uh, excited to be taking advantage of us and, and, and taking advantage of and, and try to motivate us for the same thing as well. The feds ain't into you. Well, the feds ain't into people who try to be independent and not selling their ass. Of course, the yeah. feds are for people who can be flipped. Can we just be real, Sin? P. Diddy was a plant. He was. He was a plant in his in hip hop. Yeah, he was. Diddy, Diddy was a plant. Y'all don't want to say, but he, he was. was. Diddy was a plant. He's probably the biggest plant in hip hop. By Clive Davis, the biggest plant in history. Come on, I'll say that again, Diddy. Hands down is the biggest plant in hip hop. Whoops, shouty. All right. But well, look, let's go ahead. Well, that's what they tried to do, Shoney. You know, they was they was trying to tell y'all that it was the Breakfast Club that was the most dangerous show on the planet. But we couldn't even get them to mumble a damn word about Diddy. Also, Strategy King said, "Yay is behind Young Miami getting caught up because she." <laughs> I'm sorry before you, before you even started reading it It already sounded funny Okay go ahead Let's see Go ahead sis so Strategy, what is, Strategy King said <laughs> Yeah he's behind young Miami Getting caught up too Because the, the bitch Was running her mouth about him <laughs> Okay y'all Listen I'm not angry about anything. I, I want to be honest with you all. I, I t Sandy and I, we told you guys from the very beginning, the best thing you can do in this universe is have patience. Yeah, good. If Ye's doing yeah. the Lord work, I hope I hope yeah. it's true. People don't like Floyd Mayweather's fighting style. I'm just speaking about his fighting style, not about his politics. That's another story. But his fighting style indicates patience. Look, Prince Solomon's sincere ignorance thought crimes to think tank. We just kept doing what we was doing. We actually had people try to poach us concerning that revolt shit. Just talking to a nigga, oh man, I don't fuck with that shit. Oh man, come on, it'll be it'll possibly be great. You may even get on a breakfast club. Nigga, you mentioning all of the stops I don't want to go to. Did he don't like <laughs> he don't like light skinned niggas anyway, so he wouldn't like a uh, prince. Well it looked like he well, I don't know. And that way. Well, he would I mean, like you in another way though. Yeah. Pimp pimp. Yeah. So what did he do? Yeah, that's what he said. <laughs> But also getting to the Cuban Gooden Jr. situation too, uh, Lil Rods is actually pressing ch uh, criminal charges against Cuban Gooden Jr. Like all of them getting wiped out. Cuban Gooden Jr. Have you seen some of the video of Russell, how aggressive Cuba is when he's drunk? He's nasty. Yeah, it's very weird. He had a clip talk about somebody f that baby. Put the mic down. Sam. I know. That's it's gross. That's it's gross. Much. It's gross. I mean, damn, damn, man. We went from uh, show me the money to show me the ass. I well, mean, this is crazy. You, and the crazy part about it is, you know, he was the uh, the veneration of the quote unquote the the good black man. 
that's I told you. <laughs> this is why some of these niggas crying because y'all y'all believed in illusions. Darren <laughs> Seals is dead. He was it. a real good black man, and y'all crying over his niggas who was faking it the entire time. <laughs> I'm a good black man. What's who Simmons? I got ass beats and I'm raping bitches. I'm a good black man. I'm Diddy yeah. and I'm allegedly raping men and women and yeah. allegedly trafficking and grooming children. I'm a good black man. All these so called public mainstream good black man was all a rahu illusion it never was real and the ones who were truly good black men were ignored yeah you know i mean look that's what it is and i actually believe uh, this is this is how y'all about to allow white mainstream media and, and let's give it up for them let's let the motherfuckers in let, let's, let's, you black niggas don't want to talk about this Y'all so scared. Nah, fuck them. Let us yeah. eat. Fuck oh, them white media no, outlets. <laughs> we already eating, see. I know, but I'm saying, bring all that to us. No, we already eating. Like see. what Pusha T said, I want all the curses. I want all the blessings. Fuck what he said. <laughs> shit, fuck that. That's Santeria, nigga. You can keep that curse shit, nigga. Keep that for yourself, nigga. He might got the code for that shit. But the reason why I'm saying this is because they always cry about white media. They always cry about it. Just like they dropped the ball with the Meg the Stallion thing. You know, they was online paying folks. And I said, what is this shit? So what y'all do? Y'all just, but y'all just always gonna, y'all just gonna be dumb niggas? But y'all can't talk anyway. Y'all can't really talk anyway. So I don't want to hear anything else about it. I don't want to hear anything else about it. Um, we gotta make, look what Diddy was trying to do at the last minute. Tell me, I'm looking for black millennial content creators. I says, nigga, are you crazy? Yeah, we was online. We said, we said on X, hell no, we ain't going over there. Fuck you. All right, then. Well, so. And also, one more thing to add. Ethiopia also says she is flipping on Diddy. She will corroborate with Lil Rod because she said she ain't messing up her career. Okay, well, here's the thing about uh, Ethiopia over Motown, uh, which is in conjunction with UMG, Universal Music Group, uh, which also she said she had to report directly uh, as far as getting any cash advance checks to deliberate over to Love Love Records and, and, and Diddy, right, going with his Love album. She said she had to get that special approval also with the signature of Lucian Grain. That's why he's involved in all of this. So what she went and ended up doing, they were actually going to put the they was going to make her the fall guy and she's already going through a lot a lawsuit with them for unjust termination of, of she's saying discrimination but they were going to make her a fall guy now remember we told you all about the white witch that's with diddy that you know she's not she's she's not being made to be the fall guy she's actually riding with diddy all the way through with all of this but also ethiopia she left she left i think a little bit after everything that took place right and then in some regards some of the stuff that hadn't take place yet that she also left before then but she is turning right now because she says look you're not going to be using me as a fall guy in this situation and lucian grange got the money to cut the check see diddy should have cut the check but since he didn't lucian grange is going to cut the check so his try to save his ass i think it's because diddy possibly may resent his father Cause he turned a, he turned he turned a blind eye quick with that Cassie like overnight. Cassie, we all we all we got was text messages and text uh, for the document concerning the lawsuit. Lil Rod, he came with pictures, photographs, he got videos, <laughs> evidence. And then he gonna come out cause he a black nigga, right? He a black nigga with a little wide nose, cause you know how these niggas are with self hate. He gonna tell him we about to. He told the nigga, lawyer up, we about to go to war. And the Fed said, okay. All right, let's go ahead and hear what Uncle Luke has to say. When you go and you get these billions and you see them put you up on a pedestal, that's that's because they put you up on a pedestal. They made you the guy. They placed you on every network. They sold you to all y'all on here. They gave you five million followers. They put all this, they dress you up like a fucking hoe. On the street, they gave you the Bugattis, they gave you the mansions on two different coasts. They put you up on a pedestal because they need you. It's like some pimp shit. When you got when you when you got your main girl, you dress her up and she look like this and look like that and do this and you march her into the, to the big room. I'm telling you. So when they put you on that motherfucking pedestal, 
And then you start thinking it's about you and you want to take over their shit. Them people look back like this. Hold on. Who the fuck you think he is? Oh, we'll show you better than we can tell you. Then they'll try to reason with you and they'll talk to your manager because your manager look like them. And they'll be like, hey, man, tell, tell your man to chill out. You know, and then the manager come in and he trying to keep his job. Hey, hey guy, be, uh, calm down. And then you go walk around like it's all about you. You got all the, the cars and the mansions and the jets and all the yachts and all this and all the people running around. You talking about, yeah, yeah, yeah. And now you want to fight. Now you want to bite the hand that feeds you. Don't your mama ever always tell you that? Your mama say, never bite the hand that feeds you. And so this is how the major corporations work when you try to come after them. Now you put a lawsuit in. Bam! Lawsuit. Fuck that shit. I'm suing their ass. I'm take their company down. Fuck that shit. They taking my brand and my name and likeness and they making millions of dollars. I want out of this contract. And now, mind you, these people on the stock market, they stock go down 5%. That just cost them some billions. So they're looking at this motherfucker to the, to the shareholders. This motherfucker is affecting our stock. They got to hold on. You just fucked up some billions of dollars. These are major corporations that are on the stock market that you can affect their stock and cost them in one, in one day Billions of dollars by having their stock drop because your sneakers, you tell the people you don't want them selling your sneakers. Or you don't want them sell, you they stealing money from you, ain't paying you off the liquor. Them people like, hold the fuck on. Okay, get the lawsuit. Now when you get the lawsuit, you got to go to the, the judge State judge, they definitely own the state judge because they're going to buy the, the number one law firm who put the most money into the state judge, into the, into the local judge campaign to make him the local judge. It's big bank take little bank. It goes back to CeeLo. The federal judge, they're going to then find out who, who, what senator and congressman that called the president to say, I need an appointment for my federal judge because how do you get an appointment for a federal judge is because I'm a major donor and hey man I got a friend of mine that's a judge man on the circuit level uh man I would love for him to be a a federal judge and I'm gonna max out in your campaign matter of fact I'm gonna generate a couple hundred thousands or a million dollars to put in your campaign you win the seat you then call up the president President then say, hey, look here, man, nominate this motherfucker right here. So now you got a fucking judge in here. You got the state judge. So then now you, nigga, you black man who don't own these people's company, you want to talk all your cash money shit. And you want to go after these people, what ends up happening? They start the smear campaign because they own, they down with the media. They got to smear you before you go into the courtroom of your peers. They go, okay, you, we can't settle with this dude. We can't we have no voice of reason. He want to act crazy. Now we're going to go after you. Now we're going to call up our same senator. Hey, man, I need you, man, go issue a search warrant, man. I need you to drag this motherfucker. In the hood, that's what we call it. I want you to drag his ass. I want you to have all kind of allegations. So by the time he come in this courtroom, he going to wish he ain't know we're going to take every fucking dime you got. Because we made you. You didn't make us, God damn it. You fuck with my stock. You fuck with my money. You fuck with me. I'm going to fuck with you. I'm going to break your ass down to the lowest term. That's how this shit go, boss. So when you fuck with them people that put that bread in your pocket that made you, they're going to take they're going to take you down to the lowest terms. Sound like the movie Scarface. Bingo. That's how they do. So you go 
They didn't smear your name. By the time you get in the courtroom, you lost already because you're sitting up there with a jury looking at you like you're a fucking pedophile and you probably ain't never touched a little girl in your life. And you're trying to sue this major corporation, this major respectable corporation, and they're going to say how many people they employ, how many people and half the people on the jury drink their shit, or half the people on the jury, children walking around with their paraphernalia on. You get ready, you get ready to sue them, and they'd have made you a, through the media, they'd have made you a crazy man, and they'd have made you a goddamn pedophile, they'd have made you everything that you're not. I'm giving y'all some good shit today. Never bite the hand that feeds you. So now when you walk up in that room and you take and you make the uh, and you make the deal, you cut the deal with the devil. And then you got one motherfucker, he wanna talk about everybody else who's still in the room. You know, you know, you know that why I be sitting there looking at that shit. I'm like, he telling on everybody. You know, cause you in the room, you know this motherfucker run this motherfucker, that motherfucker run that motherfucker. That, you know. He's speaking truth there. He's right. speaking a lot there of truth. Go, but, ladies and gentlemen. But we also add this, you know, Diddy should have never bit the hands that feed him because he was never real to begin with. You know, yeah. Biggie was an actual talent, even though, you know, some people have allegations of him being nasty too. But the whole point is what makes it worse for Diddy is the things he's being alleged of doing. He's on camera doing it. He's. Uh, uh, the underworld knows he did it. Just like the mm -hmm. underworld knew R. Kelly was involved. The only thing that... Though right. that adds a spin to this, what Luke is saying, all the other people, though, that was involved, like allegedly, like with Charlie Sheen, allegedly with the R. Kelly thing, he wasn't mentioned because he's not biting the hand that feeds him. You talk about, like, like why didn't I bring it up Leonardo going to the parties or what's the big head uh, white dude from that 70s show? Because none of them are biting the hands that feed them. Diddy was the only one that allowed himself to be hyped up to think he can go against these people when he already has done so much on camera. Well, here's the other side of it. And, and whoa, if I go ahead and share this with you all, they don't make money off them boys like they make it off the black niggas. See, I know we, everybody, you know, there's a, there's a system in America that will promote that. Well, you know, black folks don't really make no money, but that's a lie. NWA, you go through every act in music, all of the biggest sellers have been black. So another reason why it's plastered everywhere. First of all, they're going to work a black artist or a black personality like a damn slave. I mean, look at Michael Jackson. You know, he died much earlier than he was projected to because he was pretty much over. He said, guys, this is it. And it was. It was oh, shit. It was it. Right. So. That's why I said I agree with 75% of everything that Uncle Lucas said. He's absolutely right. That other 25% where I said, no, nah, what did he from even black fingers, black lips have said they've had whistleblowers. People have went to blogs. They went to podcasts. There's some people that are not even breathing right now. Folks, as we speak, there are people up under the ground. Their corpse are rotten that they died with alleged secrets concerning Diddy. I want you to be clear. While you're here, you know, while some of us are here defending this man, there are some people that are in a casket, whether bought and paid for by their family or they couldn't afford to be buried and they had to be buried in one of them cheap boxes that they throw your ass in and you can rot at night, right? There's a lot of people that are not here right now because of some of the backdoor dealings that were going on allegedly with the likes of Sean Combs. So there's a different angle to all of this. Look. Well, you have a situation where a black entrepreneur comes forward and they, they're really pretty much clean, right? And then you see how they kind of handle them. They, they go to the death level. They, you know, they start knocking off family members, start jamming them up. A lot of low disruptive frequency programs are put on them. Then you're like, oh, man, that's crazy. What's going on over there? But Diddy is an entirely different case. And, and, and also he's a welfare case, too. You know, the reason why they got Michael Jackson up out of here, you know, you can't say the same thing with him. MTV didn't make Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson made MTV. Michael Jackson was already a childhood superstar. 
who was already part of a group that changed music forever, mm-hmm. where now people created New Edition and all these other type of uh, boy bands because of, of the Jackson 5. So they were already a staple in music from Motown and all of this. Michael Jackson literally made the new form of the industry and all those bums, what they do in return, they smeared his name and lied. That's where the little difference is, where you can say the industry made Diddy, which they did. The industry didn't make Michael Jackson. He was already a fucking king. Yeah, so, you know, again, what he's saying is is definitely correct, but also Diddy has spent most of his time hiding behind that particular factory stock situation that Luther Campbell is talking about. He's absolutely correct. There have been situations. We've seen it with record labels, black musicians, black entrepreneurs. We've seen it with Seneca Village. We've seen it with Rosewood. We've seen it in Durham, North Carolina as well. We've seen it historically concerning black entrepreneurship in this country where they have been unjustly removed out of their equity by mafias and all types of mafias, okay? All types of mafias in America. America is a collection and a consortium of uh, of a a nation of networking families but also it is a network of gangs you got jewish gangs you got white gangs you got mexican gangs you got black gangs and all of these little things all of these groups these networks somehow they little ganglia they reach out to each other right on some bdnf receptors they reach out to each other and they communicate to each other just like we talked about in hip-hop you have from what is alleged, let's let's play the button here, right? What is alleged in the industry, right? <laughs> let's, let's talk about it. You have non-black faces activating black faces in the industry, in that industry, and knocking off very valuable assets. People that are worth millions of dollars. Some of these guys are dying in that industry. They have no idea how much their insurance policy is placed on their head. Some of them don't even know how much money they generated for a company. We gave you all the metrics, you know, when Nelly talked about the, he said he had the toughest run with all of the big names, and it, it, we, we absolutely agree. It was the inflationary period of hip-hop. Everybody was looking at numbers, you know? Routinely, think about if you do $2 million, $3 million, and you can make a company a billion dollars, imagine what happened when 50 Cent went diamond. This is what usually goes on. So one of the reasons why they take these individuals down is because they influence it's so grand and great. Right, like the Italian Mafia as well. Because yes. uh, uh, Mackie said, don't forget about my people. Yes, the Italian Mafia as well. <laughs> <laughs> my people. Don't forget about us Italians. Yeah, well, yeah. Italians did make uh, the Mafia very popular. That's why a lot of rappers. There's a consigliere in the chat. A lot chat. of rappers like to reference uh, the Italian Mafia. Yeah, I mean, you see it with the like the popular in the United States. Yeah, you have, um, you know, uh, you you're right. You know, with the Al Capones, the Lucky Lucianos, and you know the Genovese's and all these other people. And in fact, a lot of that energy does bleed into an earlier era of black music concerning enforcement, enforcers, people that own record label. Look, you've heard the story about Tommy Mottola. If you look at the backstory concerning that, there, I think in this situation where people will have to learn to shake the social engineering. Look at how many people over the years have been talking about Diddy. Let's not stand on ceremony like Bain says. Let's not act like, oh, this is just shocking. This just surprises us one day. Like, Diddy's doing what? You all have heard Gene Deal has been out here for the longest. Suge Knight said what he said about Diddy. And Suge Knight said, look, I, look Suge Knight's no better than himself. Right. But at least these stories have been out there. There are people that say, I don't want to sign to Diddy. Diddy has muscled people out of records. That means money, millions of dollars. We saw recently what um, the songwriter read, how Tiffany read, how she had to come out and make a statement. She talked about how Diddy threatened her directly. Well, then to add to you your know? point, what I love about Suge, he never pretended. Right. He was always straightforward, just like even when we talk about uh, Reggie Wright. What I don't like about Diddy is Diddy put on the face as if he was this upstanding civilian when he really was a pimp who was getting yeah. pimped. And, you know, people don't appreciate deceivers, deceptors, and liars. You're a Decepticon. Mm-hmm. You're going to get it worse than someone who said, look, I've always been dirty. You know? This is why when uh, someone who has a very clean image, when they do even something a little bit bad, people go insane versus someone who always been truthful about their shadows and flaws. They don't get much uh, uh, 
blowback because, you know, people like, oh, well, we know they told us. Actually, it was very important for Suge Knight to exist because then, as it seems, Diddy could hide. You know, even when he kept like, oh, man, you know, Biggie never, never said nothing about Tupac. He never responded to Tupac. I said, come on, nigga, shut up. (laughs) Stop it. That's a grown man, you know, and I don't know no grown man that has an ounce of competition is going to allow some bald headed little nigga keep screaming at them on the microphone with a nose ring without sending some shots back. Even with that type of delusion, remember, Diddy, I'm going to do a gospel record. I'm going to do this and third. One thing that is stated, though, that I did love about what Uncle Luke said in this situation. It's the end when he said they're still telling on people in the room. Now, the real question is, who can Diddy flip? See, this goes back to what I brought up earlier at the top of the podcast. About who's next? (laughs) When Charlemagne was crying. And DJ Envy was crying. Go get a tan, nigga. When DJ N was crying, <laughs> right? Oh, why y'all talking about who's next? I think the public has a right to know. Because if there's a trafficking ring going on, I mean, this is the same breakfast club that tried to shush everybody out when it came to the T.I. allegations. And then T.I. got a chance to be found not guilty only for him and his wife to run into more allegations. Right. More allegations. You know, so there's T.I. on the table. Of course, there's Jay-Z. Reggie Wright came out and said, you know, at the time uh, what uh, Jay-Z was into underage girls, allegedly. Uh, you know, some people are more sloppier with the allegations than others. So uh, obviously when it comes to R. Kelly and Diddy, it was really easy for Prince and I to say this was mm. going to happen because anyone who's like Caligula, anyone who's like very grand with their debauchery and then people get like uh, surprised that Thought Crimes called it seven years early and stuff like that. There's nothing to be surprised about because it's about behavior patterns. If you watch people's psychology and you see that they're this grandly stupid you know for sure a hundred percent that this person whether it takes seven years 10 years 20 years you know they're gonna be got just the same thing with concrete face harvey weinstein <laughs> being a, a outwardly a, a piggish to that degree certain people take a little bit more time because they're more subversive uh they're more careful with what they do and, 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 you know, people being surprised about R. Kelly and, 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 and uh, Diddy getting caught up. Like, come on. It was, well, we said it was that, written um, on the wall. Look, we said when R. Kelly finally got in prison, get ready for a domino effect. And, you know, Ebony, scapegoats, you, you're not wrong about that. But that's what happened with Butler niggas. That's what niggas. This is the butler. Yeah, this This is a Lee Daniels production. Yeah, like when 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 these guys be putting their pinky rings in in your face, I give you bitch and I'll get you clap, nigga, right? You know, but you're still a butler, nigga. So that's why you always blamed for the bad food. You always blame for people getting food poison. They don't even think about the person at the grocery store that was selling the poison food. They just think about the butler, nigga, that cooked it. Fire him. But send my new butler to the same store so you can get poisoned all over again. See, the illusion was this. That Diddy was really a boss nigga. That he ran shit. That's what he told the black niggas in the field. I run this industry. Right, right? <laughs> oh, Ivory House nigga. Jeffrey Epstein mm-hmm. got caught because he was too... See, Ghislaine only got caught because her man was dumb. Another yeah. grand dummy. Out there in the open. Sloppy with everything. Kevin Spacey got a little bit sloppy. Almost got caught. Brian Singer is quiet right now, trying to hide because he's trying to hope that nobody cares about him. But again, based off of white, black, Jewish, Hispanic, whatever, the people who are the loudest, the grandest, the most debaucherous, even if they're the fall guy or fall girl, they will always fall first because they're the most grand. Look at even when we talk about the Royals. Out all the mean and nasty things the Royals did over in the UK, who got caught? Andrew. And why did Prince Andrew get caught? Because he's the most raggedy of them all publicly. Yeah. So, again, before they run this this black man, yeah, we see that's a black man. We see that. But we also see there was a black man acting up and misbehaving. We seen there was a black man admonishing and castigating other black men, other black women. This ain't got nothing to do with no... And then if you want to be like, oh, well, yeah. well, why they just mention it? Well, why did Diddy have his face in the camera? Dancing all in the video, right? The same way that they sent Kevin Hart out there and they told him to tell black America about Starbucks to shut up. 
See, y'all got to understand these black puppets will be justly rewarded. Anytime they can activate your face to get all in the way in the black people's faces publicly, right? You can get out there and say when it comes to even with the black politics, there is no color, right? When when Barack Obama ran on an African American platform, remember now the whole the whole advertising for him, the marketing, the Pepsi and Coca Cola marketing of, of of Barack Obama was that he is to become the first African American president. Yeah, Jay right? Jay Z to add yeah. to that, he's not getting in the line. Yeah. I mean, he's not getting out of line anymore after this. You're not this, this, this is it. This, no none more, of them are. Ain't no more a sleepy testimony from Hove when he was trying to talk all that all slick shit. What was that all the slick shit? Jay Electronica. What's well, it? He was with all that synagogue of Satan shit yeah. he was doing. We the real Jews. <laughs> we the real five percenters. Oh, all that's over. All that shit is over because oh, is over. he saw what happened with with Pupstein, aka Diddy. Oh, Jay Z is a hundred percent gonna stay in line now. He's gonna yeah. be uh uh yes sir, no sir. Cheer. Ch -ch Cheer. Right. Listen, you're not going to hear anything else from the industry. Uh, anything, anything about real challenging, real issues. And I said, you know, when Cindy and I was watching that interview with Diddy and Charlemagne for us, we spotted the crack then, the crack in the facade then. And also some of the people that were talking behind the scenes, even uh, some of his ghostwriters. Oh, yeah. Right. His ghostwriters knew a lot of shit because they were definitely. Hey, yeah, we all talk about it. I don't know, nigga. We, we don't know yet until we see. We can only insinuate. But when Diddy was up there with Charlemagne and remember he had that pick in his hair and he was talking about when Donald Trump was was being elected, the election cycle. And he said, yeah, you know, and he said, because, you know, Diddy allegedly he was on all them perks and shit. And uh, Tupac was right. That's oh shit, nigga. I know you on crack. <laughs> <laughs> when he said Tupac was right, I was like, they gonna get him. They got him, sir. They got him. Look, you gotta have like, look, look, look. The reason why seemingly Dave Chappelle should be fine because okay, right. he cheated on his wife. You whatever. Know, blah, whatever. If you got cheating on your wife, cheating on your husband, depending on what your image is, you may be even able to survive being closeted gay and being outed. But what you cannot survive, what you cannot survive is the allegations towards children. Yeah. When people say you, you, you are sexually assaulting people, mm. these things will tarnish your reputation forever uh, unless you are proven in the court to be innocent. But That's even it. then, you may still get some blowback. But yeah, yeah. Like Diddy, reputation, mm -hmm. whether he gets locked up or not, his reputation- oh, shot. It's done forever. It's done. It's done. Y'all can. It's done. So his reputation was shot these last ten years. Did he been sorry for the last ten years, folks? The last, the last bit of cultural relevancy that he could have had, he allowed, uh, he allowed somebody like Jimmy Iovine to tell him that dirty money. There, there were two ugly black women, and they weren't. He and said let's, that. Let, let short ass Jimmy Iovine say, and Dirty Money was the last time somebody mm -hmm. uh, carried uh, uh, Diddy's old, old ass to even make good music because Dirty yeah. Music, those two women were, were making some great Ooh. music with him. You, all I was waiting was for them to drop him <laughs> and replace Diddy with Future. <laughs> Ooh, that would have been, been a nice collab. That yeah. would have been good. You know, because <laughs> I was fucking with Dirty Money, but I said, damn, I'm so sick of seeing Diddy though. You know, with them dry ass rap. Diddy has always been a parasite in music, and y'all, y'all yeah. need to. We need to be honest with that. Yeah. Some songs he be on um, when he be whispering and shit get on my nerves. Like there's certain yeah. Biggie tracks that oh, I like, yeah. I can't even listen to because he, he talking all along. Yeah, him. yeah. Like even that one twelve song, I love it when yeah. it's like, uh, wait, wait, hold on. Go ahead. Oh, I mm -hmm. need mm -hmm. to know. Mm -hmm. Where we stand, and then Diddy comes in. Yeah, I told him that we, we ain't going. St I'm like, yo, shut the fuck up. Let the nigga sing. No, no. Mm -mm. Yeah, you know you can't even oh, enjoy baby. the groove of the fucking song without him in the background just fucking talking. Well, you know another thing I don't like about what Diddy does. He talk too much on under the he because he talk on top of niggas, but then he talk up under niggas. It must be a Harlem thing because that Harlem nigga was trying to talk on top of me. And I always tell people all the time, when you call in and you try to talk on top of me, I'm dropping the call. That's all it is. And then I'm still going to roast you. Right? So he talk up under niggas. So kick it, like, do like a biggie verse. Like, like saying, do, do like, just make up some shit. Come on, you're an East Coaster. Make some shit up. 
Just say, uh, I'm going to the store. Didn't I tell you my my nigga Wiz? Wiz. Fuck people in that. Throw them over the bridge. bridge. Mm. <laughs> mm. You can hear his breath exhaling. Mm. I tell people all the time, one of my favorite and most despised records by Biggie, I'm always going, it's, it's victory. I love Biggie's verses, but I hate that Diddy's on it. It's, you know, when he, the niggas did the double, he calls the double, the Frank White, the top. And then he did it. Yeah. The sun goes shine forever, no matter the weather. And I always say he rapped like a missing chromosome mace. Also, Ronald Ray yeah. said Diddy will beat the Chargers. Uh, Chargers haven't um, been brought to Diddy yet. Is that Christian Combs in the chat? <laughs> right. right. Yeah. Uh, Chargers haven't been brought to him yet. You know, it's been a bunch of lawsuits, but with Little Rod, there is a danger of a possibility of charges because we just saw Little Rod and yeah. that charges against uh, Cuban fat face. Yeah. So Cuban Gooden Jr. wrinkled ass face got charges on him now for sexual assault. So we'll see what happens with that. But with Diddy, yeah. with Diddy, remember with Harvey Weinstein at first, he didn't have any charges either. It was just a bunch of lawsuits until the charges came and then he got locked up. You know what's crazy about it? Like, okay, here's the thing about it. Okay, y- y- y'all keep in mind. You know, I grew up in Atlanta, so we heard about like growing up. I heard stories about how raggedy the whole bad boy death row shit got. You know, it was the story of Wolf, and that's like an urban legend all through the city of Atlanta, right? And then you know, you got the BMF shit, the Big Me stuff, and you know, I had partners come to school that they mama was sitting in the. You know, the projects with the lights off and then they come to school and they count bands up under the table. Shit, nigga, you know what time it is, right? Yeah, shout it, man. These fuck niggas don't know, P, man. We about to be on. <sighs> right? Look, nobody hates Diddy. I want people to understand that. Like, I I just don't. I, I think I hate what Diddy has done to hip hop. I think he's the worst plant in hip hop because, you know, he's he's a fucking weed planted by non black hands that has grown everywhere. He has Diddy has infected everything. I, I'm more pissed off about what yeah. he did to uh R and B. I was really fucking with one twelve and you know the uncle um Right. What's his name? Thomas uh, oh yeah, you talking about uh, Carl Thomas? Yeah, and I wish I never met her and all that stuff. I'm, I don't, I don't like what he did to them R and B niggas and yeah, the R and B men and women. It really irritates me because that's one of my favorite genres, R and B. And I just feel like uh, Diddy just, just, just shadowed over there. Yeah, Diddy is the one of the most culturally. He's one of the most toxic patriarchs in hip hop. There were a lot of up and coming people, A and R's, producers, businessmen, and and women, but mostly the businessmen that felt like I I need to act like Diddy with artists. They thought it was cool to really rip these artists off. The thing about Diddy is this: I always found Diddy fascinatingly annoying. I've always found he he was a very special type of irritation artistically to me personally. I didn't think somebody that could not structure a track, come up with an instrumental themselves, play an instrument. I didn't think they should have been having so much a celebration. I always felt Diddy was competing with his artist's attention. You know, when you saw Dame Dash dance in the video with Jay-Z with the champagne, you know, at the end of the day, Dame, like, yeah, you could tell that nigga knew he couldn't rap. You know, he just wanted to be in the video partying. Like, you know, could he be annoying? Yeah. But, I mean, at the end of the day, he ain't, he ain't rapping over a track. You know, you, you rarely heard Dame Dash rap over anything, right? Or talk over anything. No, he, no, you're right. right. He'll just show up in the, the video with drinks. But I so appreciated yeah. Dame for not talking yeah. over the damn records. Yeah. You know, and, yeah, I do also agree with you, Jen. Look, did he deserve triple the time because he affected people who meant something to the culture? Look, as as dope as the fake glamour was to certain music videos that Diddy did, some of the videos were were nice, but in no way he compares to me to to Tupac. In no way like Diddy here, but not Tupac. And I'm just talking about even just musically. I'm not even talking about just speaking on people's character. Like musically, Tupac mm-hmm. not here, but but Diddy here, Biggie not here, but Diddy here. Mm-hmm. You know, One Twelve ain't doing their thing, but Diddy here. You get what I'm saying? That stuff is is like even how he railroaded um Lil Kim's career. Oh Diddy, my like, god! And Lil yeah. Kim, it's the Naked shit, Truth, yeah. a classic album. The Naked Truth, La Bella Mafia, Hardcore, like uh, those are like Kim's 
three classics to me personally. And that's why there's this weird confusion. I don't, that's why there's this weird confusion with like Kim's legacy juxtaposed to that of Nicki Minaj because before we even get here with Nicki Minaj, like Bad Boy helped write her out of history. I want to be clear about that. You know, I, I, you know, yeah, Nikki can be disrespectful, but that's new nigga shit. That's always when new people come in the game, they trying to assert themselves and they like, you know, I'm here, you know, old person, hang it up. Right. But Kim's legacy took a critical hit under the tutelage of, of Diddy, you know, and, and people have to really look at that. Like some of the folks that are under socially engineered imagery that was perfected. Uh, concerning the psychology of fans and listeners and remember these things are done in think tanks the, these things are done in in group think pieces and studies and all this other stuff so even how someone presents themselves how an artist presents themselves that can be voted upon as well so when diddy was out here running around doing all of this mad hatter shit and um negating hip-hop look if diddy still had the clout that he had in the culture right in the past think about it you really would not have gotten a Kendrick the way he's able to breathe now. You wouldn't have gotten a Drake and you wouldn't have gotten a J. Cole. And then you got Wale and Kid Cudi in the background. Those are five artists of the new era that Diddy has had a violent confrontation with to try to stymie them somewhere. Before everybody, oh, the black man can, why would five young black men coming in the game, why did they all have a physical violent altercation with Diddy why did he have a violent altercation with them specifically because I'm gonna tell you something about this toxic Scorpio nigga he can smell when it looks like there's about to be progress somewhere and Diddy wanted to bring everything up under his reign based on what they said you get what I'm saying so for a long time he's been ruling in this manner so people talking about oh he active this that and third and well look you you do have Donald Trump out here on trial with 91 charges Right. And people say, man, you know, I agree. Ninety one charges. He gets to fly about the country. Absolutely. But some of the stories I didn't heard about Diddy. Bodies, allegedly. He get to move around the country for 30 plus years. I mean, there's a lot of death tied to this man publicly. Publicly. There's a lot of death. In fact, if it wasn't for some of the things like even with the idea of his partner that helped start at Bad Boy Records. He came forward and said when Tupac got shot the first time at the Quad Studio, he said that Diddy knew what he was doing when he had the Who Shot Your Record put out. He said we were intentionally looking to antagonize Tupac. Now you have to ask yourself, what in the living daylights was the reason for Diddy looking to antagonize Tupac? Diddy should have been in the world of fashion. <laughs> you know, that's that's fair. Y'all nigga keep fucking around, ahead, fuck around, fuck ahead. around, get stuck in the ground. I mean, he could dress very well. That's that's where he should have been, not uh, destroying people who basically just are, their musical IQ is way far superior to him. I understand people say, you know, he gives people direction, you know, yes, boo. That outfit looked good, stage presence. Okay, maybe extend it over to that, but... I mean, he's a glamour girl. He was yeah, a glamour girl, but he was out of pocket where he extended himself to. So we want to have people call in. The number is 903-600-0530. Call in. Let's have a conversation and chit-chat about this right now. Uh, again, the number is 903-600-0530. Let's have this conversation, guys. Where you could tell us your thoughts on yeah. the subject. Yeah, look, folks, that's all we're saying here. I mean, before y'all, before they tell you the the black man, the black Jesus, the Messiah, and how you know uh, Hoover is shutting down the black Messiah. <laughs> you know, keep in mind with perspective, folks. Diddy has there's been a lot of carnage concerning this. One of the reasons why your hip hop is kind of all jammed up because you know he definitely played a main character in the villainization of hip-hop you can say whatever they want to say you know so i do see that they don't want to talk about it and that's perfectly fine you don't have to talk about it we're going to continue to talk about it 
That's what we're going to continue to do and do what we need to do. But at the end yeah. of the day, folks. Roland Martin got mad, too. He said, yeah. who was talking about it? Come on, Roland Martin. What stop say? it. We what know did, that Diddy was giving money to some black, some of y'all black boule niggas. Wait a minute. Say that again. Now, break it down for the people that don't know. Somebody what did Roland Martin say? Somebody on X, a black woman, was like, well, I don't know why these uh, mainstream media black sources ain't saying it. We underfunded. Uh, Ebony. Essence. I'm like, nigga, shut up. You know they weren't talking about that. And he got all mad in a hissy fit. And then he finally talked about Diddy some days ago. Y'all don't have a choice. Y'all don't have a choice. Y'all might as well go and get rid of you. Look, if y'all think this is bad now, get ready for the trials to start. But I do expect white people need to clean up their uh, backyard. You know, they are overly focusing on Diddy and stuff. Y'all should be focusing on Lucian Grange. Y'all should be focusing on Clive Davis. Y'all should be cleaning up your backyard with uh, the other Epstein's and Lou Perlman. And uh, well, he already got was in prison and dead. So y'all did a good one on that one. But um, well, see, you know how my <laughs> mindset is. You know, I mean, sometimes I just sometimes I just don't like what 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 some of us do in the culture, like. Clearly, there's dry paint on the wall in front of us, and some of us. The first thing we do, we talk about well, what, what's behind our heads, though. Now, well, you got to get the higher ups though, who keep putting Diddy in power because the cycle don't end. That's the problem. Now, it's good as a community, we should get rid of Diddy because he's harming us. But at the same time, if people ain't cleaning up, the people who put like think about, it, they are the ones who chose this raggedy ass nigga to be in power. They didn't choose no no real black excellence, nobody who was gonna really help the kids and, and, and instead of allegedly harming them and stuff. They put this deviant in place and put him over something that's very important to black people, music, because we are the ones who revolutionized music with jazz, uh, with the blues, with R&B, pop, everything, hip hop and all that, so ragtime, so for us, this is very intimate, kind of like how, you know, with the Scottish people, the bagpipes are very intimate to their culture. And they put this bum in that special position. Call Hey, what's good with you, Carly? You're now live with Thought Crime. This is your man, Prince Solomon. And Sincere. What's up? Uh, how you doing, man? Uh, this is uh, Jonathan. I called in a couple of days ago. Um, I'm from Florida. Okay. Uh, Miami. Yeah. So, oh, um, wow. I'm wanted... sorry about the first lady of Miami, young Miami. How you feeling? Oh, how that? you feeling, man? <laughs> <laughs> glad. I, yeah, no, no, I'm glad. No, I, I never supported mm -hmm. any of that whole hot girl summer era. I'm glad mm -hmm. this whole thing is being taken down because we need a new lease on life. We need that empowerment, that Tupac Shakur, you know, music back, that, that Lauren Hill, left eye type music back. You know, we need that back. So I'm, I'm glad that this is a new era starting. I feel happy about Diddy because this is going to start, you know, that process of, you know, opening the door for that Epstein list that should have been out for people to start paying attention to that. The Bill Gates of the world, the world families, all of that, all these people who have been around the Bill Clintons, mm -hmm. the Donald Trumps, you know, all of these big name people who have just been able just to kind of skirt free and, you know, nobody, you know, say anything for real. I want them all taken down. And I hope, like like what Sincere was saying, I hope she, he starts writing names, like telling the name, the names like uh, Lucian Grange and things like that. So I, I feel good about this. I'm glad you called in and said that about that lips, uh, list because we've been waiting for that Epstein list. And they keep they put out a deck, uh, uh, a nigga who couldn't walk or, oh, yeah. and, and they put him out. But we like, where's the rest of the list? We know mm -hmm. there's a lot more people on this list than this this dead dude. Well, I'll tell you this though. I this is this is my this is my thought on it. I actually think with the list, Diddy is a part of the narrative. This is why he's going through it, because if you read into the lawsuit and then you read into certain managers over funds, they tie in directly with certain funds concerning um firms, excuse me, concerning Jeffrey Epstein. So I actually think this is a part of it. The problem here is this, is that... Um, they're stalling. Uh, yeah, they're going to be stalling. But again, I don't I don't know to the point of, you know, what Lucian Grange may owe, may not owe. Because look, we did see them remove Les Moonves as well. So there are some deep state politics that do go on, as you guys can see, entertainment and politics. I know people try to figure out why do why are thought crimes talk about entertainment and politics because they're intermingled together and they showed you on the house of car when he was threatening the billionaire. Go and ahead. I, and Naomi Campbell is a part of it too. Her raggedy ass is it was always BFFs with Diddy for a long time. But last thoughts, Carla? She's on Diddy and Epstein. Go ahead, Carla. 
Oh, uh, just my, my last thoughts are just, I'm glad this is happening now. And to all the so-called black alternative independent media who isn't calling it out and who is protecting Diddy, y'all are some ops, man. And we will rock with y'all for real. So I, I appreciate Thought Crimes for, um, you know, standing for the truth. So that, that's pretty much that on that. All right, we appreciate well, you. Well, appreciate you, Jonathan. Uh, Shouts out to people in Miami, too, by the way. Call from Jay. Whoops. All right. Yo. All right, caller, you're now live. Well, I guess it, they'll, they'll call back in. Anyway, the number is 903 600 530. It's a bit of a technical error. Too bad. Wait for the last call. You can call back in. As you guys can see, the number is on your screen 903 600 530. And here's the, um, the other side of it. I do want to say this, though. I actually think, like I told you guys last live stream, I think Diddy is, he is now, he he, he is now a weapon, like a, an actual weapon of like, but who is he going to be turning on? Because we know Diddy is not necessarily built like that. Uh, as we've seen, again, he left Biggie Smalls at the stoplight. I keep saying that. Same thing with Ghislaine, Ghislaine Maxwell. We right. got, we got two weapons here. Ghislaine Maxwell. Who's up there in prison right now. And then we have uh, Diddy, who's not in prison yet or had uh, criminal charges pressed on him yet. But uh, we got two people here who who basically could take up all of Hollywood. With Diddy, yeah, is most of black Hollywood. But with Ghislaine uh, Maxwell, it's most of white politicians, white dignitaries and white Hollywood. You know what they're saying, too? Remember now, allegedly, they said that uh, Ghislaine Maxwell is still cooperating is still cooperating with the authorities again if you read deeper into this diddy situation he actually knows people that are at a nexus point with Ghislaine maxwell and your boy dead epi you know so i again you don't even know about diddy's coat being pulled does this have anything to do with that over there well, as well? Prince Harry was mentioned in the lawsuit, not for criminal reasons. They didn't say he was doing anything nefarious, but yet his name was still mentioned in the lawsuit, you know? And we know Prince Andrew was mentioned uh, with <laughs> Jeffrey Epstein. Call Caller, call her name and where you're Michelle. from. Oh, Michelle. Okay. What's up, Michelle? Yeah, how y'all guys doing? Good, and um, you? I'm, I'm good. I'm good. I'm going uh, to say my thoughts on dating and get off y'all air. Um, my thing is with Diddy, it's like, this has been a long time coming. Like, I've been tracking Diddy for at least the last, I'll say 10, 15 years, because I'm a millennial. So, seeing throughout the blogs and whatnot, I thought, like, you know, he was just, you know, doing, you know, his art is shady. But, you know, as the years go on, you see certain things and certain actions and certain habits. It's really like I'm still shocked to see how much of a demon he is. But my <laughs> thing is now, it's, it's true. So my thing then now is like where all this is going to play out in the future because he's never been in this position before. So is he going to ride out because he's too much of a narcissist to, I think, kill himself? I think like is he going to be Epstein or Diddy steamed? Like, it's a very, I would say it's a very interesting time for, like, people who, like, had to study the industry or study media or whatnot to see, mm-hmm. okay, well, what is he actually going to do? What's, like, the power dynamics that's going to be in there? What so is I'll just to... hang up and... Okay. Well, thank you, for Michelle, for the question, too, by no the way. Problem. Thank you. Uh, that's yeah, a re- no that, that's a really good question because uh, any of those things can happen. Some people who've been close to Diddy said they think he may commit suicide. Some people think... You know, he may be in protective custody. He's an asset. Uh, you never know, you know where my with mind these is going with it. You know what? Well, okay, where your mind going with the prince? Diddy the snitch. <laughs> that nigga ain't killing himself. <laughs> and he ain't giving up no uh, white major white sharks either. He ain't giving up no great whites. You know, you're going to start seeing for the, the next duration of the two to three year process, you're going to start seeing random, very prominent black businessmen and women go under. You know, I mean, okay, who we got left that's very popular? Okay, you got the the Carters that are very popular. You got Mary J. Blige. You got uh, mm-hmm. you got um. Who do you have? Who do you love? You got Chris Brown. You got you got Justin Bieber. Yeah, yeah no. <laughs> you he... got. I mean, you do got, but that's only going to last a certain amount of time, though. Yeah, that will be fucking, of course, 
media gold for a lot of people Look, for you a also, while. But... You got the other you got the other unknown billionaires and if you start giving up let's just let's throw a name out there like Ray Dalio, right? Well what if Ray Dalio randomly comes up with some allegations? I'm not saying none of these guys would get it, but I will say this, I don't believe I believe Diddy is gonna cooperate. I, I that's what I truly believe. And there's no way he can spin his image publicly, to be honest with you. There's nothing he can do publicly to spin his image. But, you know, um, if it is true that he's also on drugs at the level that they claim he's on, then also that could affect his brain pattern. It could affect the way he how he approaches the case. He could have withdrawals. We don't know what's going on. But I will expect more controversy in the industry of a lot of legends to fall uh, because, again, a lot of people have partied over there. I believe T.D. Jakes is another person you should pay attention to as well. Uh, be more covered at Sin and I covered it as well. Have you yeah. ever been swallowed? Yeah. You know, there's a lot of people. I mean, we saw people up there bluffing Tyler Perry. You don't know what that's all about. There's a lot of things going on. Yes, uh, there's a lot of people, names you guys are mentioning, some names in the chat. Absolutely. Look for them to have issues. This man, unless he's going to get his jaw cracked. This man is going to be jaw jacking for real. Oh, absolutely. Also, we already know the Kardashians are in danger. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know. we already know about that one. Right. Um, so, you know, like I said, I know we, you know, people are joking and having fun and saying, you know, Diddy, you know, finally got it because Diddy's done some flavored things in people's faces. But I say, yeah, he's a valuable asset at this point now. He's a weapon. It's a very Diddy is a very dangerous weapon because number one, he don't care. He left Biggie at a stoplight. I keep saying that. But, this man does not care. I'm not saying Biggie was a good guy, but to kind of like pimp the image of Biggie Smalls and then pimp R and B and then even to some degree he was trying to get out there and dance with his children to, to introduce like the, the babies, like this is gonna be the second wave of the combs. It, it's been very interesting. I, I do think though he still can always get Epstein though. Oh, because course. because Epstein wasn't trying to allegedly seemingly wasn't trying to commit suicide, but he still ended up with his neck broken. So he was ready to snitch too. Yeah, well, but he was he was gonna snitch on the white come people. Come on, there you go. That's say why it. he got. That's why I said that it. he why he come got on. allegedly killed. He was actually about to say some real names. He up was going to snitch on past presidents. Come on, he now. was going to snitch on dignitaries, popes. He was going to snitch on news anchors. Yeah. He was going to snitch on on. Uh, judges and tech uh, tycoons. Come on, get so, out of here. So uh, Epstein was ready to snitch, but uh, he couldn't get to the, couldn't cross the line. Yeah, because, um, you know, that's what I'm saying. And, and look, I do believe that more of it is going to be coming out. And I actually believe one of the reasons why you see the Meth Head Club very quiet right now. And I'm speaking specifically to about Charlemagne and Envy, right, is because they have been in the industry for so long. There's been so much of debauchery, right? They know what time it is. Everybody knows what time it is. Everybody knows what time. Diddy is not someone, as y'all say in hip hop, that stood on their time. Like, uh, what you say, what, uh, Pimp C or Beanie Siegel? He's not one of them niggas. He, he, ain't, he ain't got nowhere near the tenacity. You think he gonna do what Sean did? Sit his ass in prison and not say nothing? Nah. Shit, and then the lady come out and said, Shine didn't even shoot me. Shine almost took that secret to the grave. Mm -mm -mm. Also, to keep it point to, to Sin's point, look, look at look what Epstein's prison cellmate was. Look at this nigga. That was his cellmate. Bane. <laughs> and we said that back in then too. We said that when it happened. Bane snapped the neck. Allegedly. Allegedly. <laughs> look, we got this sort of screen. A, con a contract killer. Look at this. <laughs> look at this gladiator 3000 nigga. Oh, we got a caller. All right, we got a caller, so let's get back to it. All right, we about to get back to it. So we having too much fun now. All right, let's go ahead and see. Call from... 423, you're now live. What's good with you? Yes, I would just want to ask one question uh, about Diddy. Um, why is the home... Um, what is it? Home um, security uh, on him? The FBI and the um... Homeland Security. Yes. You want to know why they raided his uh, his homes? Yes. Uh, ain't that doing with terrorists and stuff like that? Yeah, it can also deal with trafficking too. So what happened with Jeffrey Epstein when uh, the young ladies came out and said that you know he trafficked them and stuff like that? They raided his home 
in Florida and also his places in New York and his property. So because Diddy is going through similar allegations, they raided his home to see if there was any evidence that they can take that proved that, you know, he was trafficking young girls or boys or whatever the allegations were. So that's why you saw Homeland Security being involved. Well, so this comes, remember now, this this is this is a byproduct of the Patriot Act 1 and 2. And I'll give you an example. Um, I had a family member, they got into it with someone and they just simply yelled at the person and mm-hmm. they were arrested for domestic terrorist threats. This is why we tell people that it's very important to pay attention to what legislation that they sign into office. You know, people were aware of the Patriot Act 1 and 2, but they weren't aware to the fact that you can actually have homeland security agents on your ass. You can actually be labeled as a terrorist when you just cursed a woman out up the street. And they can get you down as domestic terrorists. And yep. again, this is a this is a part of um, uh, the the influx of increasing the business known as the prison industrial complex. In fact, if you know from Baltimore all the way over to Denver, Colorado, they're building prisons right now uh, that they cost uh, to the net worth of two billion dollars to build. They're building these. These are called ministries from what I've seen, like in 1984, where they're having the hospital there the, the psychiatric there is all all of this stuff is going to be under on one landmass and you're seeing it with multiple prisons across this nation that are worth two billion dollars they're supposed to be all completed by the end of 2027 to 2029 these are ministries too by the way and they could be used against people who are guilty but also people who are innocent as well there was yes. some years ago where uh uh people were lied on about uh the habits when they it came to them growing their own food they were going you know uh organic food mm-hmm. and then cali they mm-hmm. had homeland security raid their businesses and you know ruined all their shit yeah, they, maybe it was that whole goat milk yeah uh, with the goat the, milk yeah, and they the didn't do anything yeah. they didn't do anything so it can be used against people who are doing something nefarious but it has been used against people just going their own vegetables and shit like weird shit of the government just coming after them yeah so this is why you know and, and diddy from what it looks from like they're looks saying like he's, he's uh, been, mo- running, been this running this from multiple properties from multiple properties Oh, okay, then. I was, I was trying to get an understanding of why they had that, you know, against me. You said you probably okay, looked at I that. Uh, that. You probably looked at all of that stuff. You said he must have did some special type of shit. <laughs> right. They did make it look like <laughs> boy supremacy. <laughs> you got black folks here. What that nigga do? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for in calling in. You never know. <laughs> All right now, thanks, man. Look, wonderful caller, yeah, uh, yes, yeah, so, you know. So uh, that's what's been going on. Don't right good old George uh, Bush politics still Thought hanging crime. around. Caller, you're now here with Thought Crimes. What's up? What's going on, Thought Crimes? What's your thoughts on this nope. whole situation? Uh, it's pretty crazy, but to think about it like this year, how everything. Everything's like coming out to light, like everything. Cause I be I be on Twitter a lot, and a lot of people exposing their, everything. Yeah, I agree. And with you. To me, go ahead. Say it again. No, no, go ahead. You say you've been yeah, on Twitter. You saying a lot of things you're seeing is yeah, being it's exposed. Yeah, crazy. Like you know, you know the boxer Ryan Garcia, right? Ryan Garcia. Yeah. The boxer be yeah. being like. I got kidnapped. They showed me videos of this and that. I'm like, damn. Like, everything's coming out to light. Like, Cat Williams. Like, Cat Williams said to um, Shannon Sharp, this is the year that everything's coming out to light. Just to give y'all a heads up, a lot of people in the industry already know when a big fall is about to happen. Like, again, which is why I said the Breakfast Club, they're lame. They want to cry about people who are putting on who's next. Well, someone told us a crip was going to die. We didn't know it was going to be Nipsey, but everybody in that industry knew it was going to be Nipsey, and now none of them punk asses opened their mouth to try to save that black man. So when we're talking about Ryan yeah, but, or yeah, and remember too, ahead, ahead. you got to remember too, um, Wack 100, he said, um, what's that guy from um, Adam 22? The guy said that. Um, you talking about Loose Cannon? Not, uh, yeah, yeah, Loose yeah. Cannon, but the other guy, the other crip, um, um, Big U. What's his name? Big U, yeah. He said that Big U called him and said, yo, he got shot. He called Nipsey, and Nipsey picked up the phone like, yo, bro, you good? And it was pretty, pretty wild. Yeah, this is... <laughs> two and two together. Yeah, it's man. That's, crazy, like. that's, what, that's what we just say what we say, man, bro. Is I'm going to keep it real with you, Shawty, man. What you see and hear from these people is all bullshit. 
It's all bullshit. Yeah. It, it's people are trying to hold on to an old image. Look, Beyonce then moved into country music, and if that don't tell nothing for the rest of these niggas, I don't know what else will. <laughs> this ain't country. Yeah, like, this is hold like Drake, on. But you, like Drake in the song, I'm not. I'm not looking at you guys like competition. I look at Taylor Swift like competition now. So you got to put everything together. Like he's speaking in codes, like about that beef. Also, like yeah, I'm not his ass trapped to run over the house music. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, like, I, and it's pretty crazy that I enjoyed that album more than the last two you put out. Oh, wow. I, I get what you're saying because yeah. you, well, you get tired of, you feel like he's he's downgrading his stock with all this, like, I'm a demon, evil, stupid what? tattoo on my face. You're not talking, you're not tired of 3,000 yeah, I mean, songs you, you of. You have uh, to play around. Yeah. You have you, to play around with it because, you know, that's like, like, I'm a really Drake, I'm a really big Drake fan. I went to his concert last year and okay. everything. Mm-hmm. But, uh, like, to. To see everything that was going through, like, it felt demonic, to be honest. Mm. Like that whole—that's like crazy. That whole presence, that whole presence felt demonic. Well, like, it is. I mean, I, like I said, so you're not enjoying the, the 5,700 songs of him smoking on an X pack? Yeah, he he been, been talking about that since Scorpion. <laughs> like, he been talking about, about yeah, that. I'm upset. Yeah, <laughs> like two hundred thousand dollar on my neck, like. Okay, bro, all right, you killed the guy or whatever. Allegedly, whatever, all right, you keep bragging about it. And, and look, look what happened to Diddy. You keep bragging and bragging. Look, it's going to come back and haunt you. What did y'all hear about? And and, and I love what you brought up here, And because I'm, I'm going to let Sin say what she needs to say here. Uh, remember when, you know, uh, Drake was rapping about this boy's death and, you know, below the neck, yeah. SMS. And then remember one of the said killers had requested Drake to to be a character witness for him in the trial, and then mm-hmm. did you notice you didn't hear any more coverage mm-hmm. about that trial? Yeah, everything went out the everything went out the window, like everything. Now yeah. diplomatic immunity. So yeah, so thank you for just, calling. All right, thank you guys. You know I enjoy your fo- your show. Keep it keep it one hundred. Hey, we gonna we gonna try to keep it going we, without whack. So. <laughs> Shouts out to you, though. But anyway, uh, again, the number is on the screen. Guys, we still have the lines open for you guys to call in. But look, uh, look, sitting there, like, there's some really scientifically dark themes that go on with that space, you know. And uh, Diddy's a very valuable asset right now. Call from. Caller, what's your name and where you from? Hey, this is Bad Apple from Dallas. What's up, Bad Apple from Dallas? What up, D-Town, man? What y'all doing? Where you at? You over by Mesquite? Which I know you ain't out there in Oak Cliff, are you? Well, actually, I'm south of Oak Cliff. I'm in DeSoto. Oh, listen, never mind. Excuse Uh-oh. me, DeSoto. I already know. <laughs> like, I'm moving it up. Uh, where I can eat at the yeah, Whataburger at night. <laughs> the Whatab- she said, I'm, I'm making a move. I'm putting in work. I'm at DeSoto. <laughs> uh, I'm at that Whataburger at 9 o'clock at night. No problem. I got money, niggas. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> It's right down the street, actually. 24 hours a day. Yeah, it's open yeah. Open 24 that over here. Actually, Whataburger was trending when it was uh they was out there trying to roast that man that was dressed like an uncle. He ain't even talking about, am I fly? I'm going to be honest with you. The only thing oh, I yeah. got distracted, I was like, damn, he eating Whataburger. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yo, but do, but do y'all know he might have a deal with um New Balance now? Wow! Get that little money, little um, little Get that money. Yeah, I was like, man, exactly. they trying to clown old boy. His his pen, his jeans starched. There ain't nothing you can say to that man. Yeah, <laughs> his coordination game yeah. is on point. Yeah. So, what's your thoughts on this? All this Diddy stuff. So, listen, I just wanted to provide a little bit of clarity when it comes to the reason why, um, homeland security is involved. Okay. Um, when it comes to trafficking, and this could be human trafficking or ex trafficking, um, it really depends on where the um, offense happens. Like if it's within state, if it doesn't cross state lines, then local enforcement will handle it. The FB will handle it if it crosses interstate lines. But if there's international travel, that's when Homeland Security comes in. Mm. Yeah, yeah, because uh, um, that that makes sense because you you have the the narrative of him, of course, crossing state lines, but you also um, have the narrative of to your point about 
uh, egregious acts taking place internationally, too. Right. So if there's private islands, if there's travel to like, you know, he's in Europe a lot, mm-hmm. um, even, you know, in the Cassie um, in her lawsuit, she if you read the lawsuit, she detailed things that happened to her in Europe, mm-hmm. um, you know, at like Fashion Week and stuff like that. And we also know that he does have his own island. Yes, he does. That. And that is the reason why he was grounded. Like they will, they will uh, prevent your um, international travel. Like you know, if you if they know you have a plane, they'll make sure that your plane is grounded. And um, like I don't know what happened with his plane, but they were saying that his plane was being used as a decoy but that he never actually made it out of the country. And it's probably because there was an alert to, you know, at any type of airport or private airport yeah, to make sure that he didn't leave the country. Right. Those are um, what you're referencing are what they call clear ports. That's what you always Jay-Z was rapping about, but you, you're exactly. speaking. Okay. And here's what's interesting. If people recall, I don't know if you, you, you know it or not, but, um, Russell Simmons and there were some other people in the industry that they said that, you know, always have your passport in order um, because in case you Mm -hmm. have to flee the country and they weren't saying in a sense like it's going to be a collapse. They were saying like if you get prosecuted or you're getting tried for sexual assault and um, one of the individuals talking about, you know, he was being educated by Russell Simmons about where the non extradition laws were. And, you know, this is this is like this is quote-unquote wealthy people's secrets and talks, too, right. by the that's way. That's why it was very interesting that uh, when uh, Russell visited the United States, the first person he met with was the mayor of New York, and now he's getting New York City, and now he's getting caught up in all this, too. <laughs> right, exactly. And, you know, I think that, um, you know, sometimes black people, I know you want to, when we, when we get to a certain um economic status Mm -hmm. that we want to feel equal but it's never going to be equal they're never going to let you move like a white person yeah you see them with the dei black people have not have no disasters with engineering or pilot anything recently right like nothing and every time something happens it's because of a white guy or some foreigners like what happened with the uh, bridge in uh baltimore and these white people still appear saying dei black people (laughs) Exactly. I mean, those are um, buzzwords that mean black. When they say DEI or when they say CRT or, you know, affirmative action, it's always code for black folks. Oh, oh, hold on now. Don't forget diversity. Right. Right. (laughs) Diversity is our biggest asset. You know, and they'll come on and say some slick stuff like that. Right. Anytime there is something having to do with a black person. Yeah. And yeah, you know, it's wild, but it never failed. Even going back to um, former Mayor Kwame Kilpatrick. Uh, I was just thinking and, about that. <laughs> yeah, other officials who, you know, when you get to a point of power or mm-hmm. a point of certain economic status, you start wanting to move like those people in the dominant society who have the privilege to move that way. They're never, ever going to get let you get um, away with the stuff that they get away with. And I think that's one of the great things. You can say whatever you want to say about Barack Obama, but he understood the assignment. Do not get caught up in any scandals. Mm-mm. Well, you do know what not it do, Well, it's nothing they can pin on him. You can yeah. you can say oh he was may have been connected to this or may have been connected to that. They have tried and tried and tried. Well, they have a um, a system just in general that you know you know you have uh, people that cooperate with the orders, and, and of course there's levels to it. You know, um, like like Meek Mill said at one time when people looked at him as a respectable rapper, but um, when you're speaking about uh, concerning. Uh, the situation with Diddy. Um, 
I mean, realistically, when I hear some people say, like, well, why him? Like, I mean, you know, shooting people in the club, like, you know, beating uh, your son's coach with a dumbbell. I mean, a cowbell. Uh, it's like, well, it, he, he's, he's, he, let's be real. Diddy ain't been the most quiet person well, with it, any of it. Well, just to add to that, though, if the yeah. Fed's hiring people to keep tap on people's sexuality, like messing yeah. with kids and stuff. They're not going to get an average Joe. The average Joe's going to be like, fuck no. I don't, yeah, I'm, I'm not here. into that. And that's disgusting. So when they want you to see what a Bill Gates is doing or this guy is doing or this woman's doing in the higher ups, they're going to have to get a Jeffrey Epstein or Diddy because mm-hmm. one, both of them already perverted. They already mm-hmm. get down like that. So if you be like, man, we want you to host the orgy party. Make sure you get a case on all these bitches. I want videotapes of all the artists and politicians that come uh, sucking and slurping and people who asking about for people who are underage. Record all that. Allegedly, Diddy is someone who would do that. And allegedly, Jeffrey Epstein is somebody well, that would do a that. Lot you, of people you can't get no that. regular person to do that type of work. Yeah, and the other thing is this, too, is that... Uh, Look, I mean, you're going to be gaslit going into certain spaces. And everybody wants to see, are you down? Like, you know, I told you guys a story one time where uh, a guy that ran a record label um, and uh, I was riding around with him and he said, you know, I think I was 20 at the time. He's like, yeah, man, we about to go get some girls, this, that, and a third. Uh, or we got to go get some women. You know, I heard the word woman, you know, so I didn't. I didn't think I was going to see, you know, uh, some little short girl come up to the car, you know, and she was just at a bus stop or whatever. You know, it wasn't like no strip or anything, but he knew her and she she looked very underage to me. You know, and he was like, man, what you think? I said, she got a big sister because, I mean, outside of that, ain't nothing happening. But apparently all of the artists on his label, they were real cool with that. And that looked like for me, that would have been a rites of passage. And you know, that's so, why he's not in that industry rapping. Yeah, so I'm not trying to be funny. Like it's it <laughs> And like, that's why Charlemagne was on the Breakfast Club years ago say all men ripped. <laughs> no, I don't know what you're talking about. Listen. <laughs> he said all men whipped in the nineties. <laughs> listen, I'm a songwriter. Yes. I lived in Atlanta for a very long time. Mm-hmm. I have seen I can tell you a whole lot of stuff that I've seen and it's real uh, yeah so I already know yeah it's already know it's real go ahead my thing is they don't bother you until you reach a certain status to where they can benefit from your downfall right Right. he has a lot of money he has a lot of money so that money is going to um is going to be taken. They did the same thing to Bill Cosby. Um, you know, it, any type of person that gets into gets into a position, and let me let me uh, reiterate, any type of person of our skin color that gets into the type of position where their downfall can be profitable, mm-hmm. then that's when they're going to come and get you. So I get what you better saying. make sure you better make sure that you don't have anything they want. And if you've got something they want, you better make sure that you have it secured. And yeah, Because what you're saying on that part is, 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 is fair. You're talking about ethics, not morality. And these people who are getting Diddy up here, they're not d- doing it because like, Oh, little Rod, I care about him being a victim or Cassie. They're doing this to clear real estate and to gobble up his fortune, which is true. Which is true. Exactly. That part of it, when you're talking about the people at the bottom, you know, truth teller, alternative media, or everyday average Joe, we care about the morality part. All these people who are being cute, talk about the end of Diddy, a lot of them were right there with him. White, black, Asian, whatever. So I do agree with you on that. It's just about clearing real estate. Yeah, the crazy part about it is uh, because I'm not in your circle, uh, I don't care about any of it. I, I would rather you, you know, just go in and crash and burn. Get out of our face. Uh, stop uh, supporting bullshit politicians. Stop lying to communities, trying to deter them, because a lot of times they send them out to calm um, the black mob when they when they find when black people catch a scent to something like, you know, the whole Starbucks thing. And then they roll Kevin Hart mm-hmm. out there and then he took he mm-hmm. took a payout. And then the brothers that were cost in the process, they was pressured into this planet tier shit where they share three dollars, you know, with each other. And then the white lady that got in trouble and blasted, uh, she wins a huge lawsuit. She, she won millions of dollars. She, a huge lawsuit. Well, to Prince point, that's the problem why Diddy ain't being defended. 
Like back in the day, a lot of the people who were in uh, certain positions, the black community used to defend them because they was building black towns and doing all this stuff. Diddy doesn't do what his competitors do with their community. They're building up their community. He tearing it down and then making, uh, trying to uh, pimp black people to take bad political uh, deals that make us broke. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, mm-hmm. yeah, and know. don't think that, like, don't think that um, those uh, Epstein properties didn't get seized by um, the countries, different countries where they were uh, located, mm-hmm. even his estate here in the United States. The government right. sees it. That's exactly what's about to happen to Sean Combs. There you go. I Se- appreciate you. Yeah. Seizure. There you go. <laughs> no, you. That's right what the government that. does. And let me tell you, mm-hmm. um, at the beginning of the Trump administration, when um, what was his name, Jeff Sessions? Jeff Sessions. The yeah. first, the first Attorney General that he had. Is the first thing he did was repeal a lot of the. Um, the policies that Obama had put in place against yeah. forfeitures and seizures. Civil and forfeitures, he, yeah. Right. And he made it uh, back easier for the government, different government agencies to seize your property. Consolidate so, properties in real estate. And that's why they're about yeah. to get uh, exactly. Trump uh, uh, property. Uh, Trump uh, put up in his cabinet. <laughs> Well, they actually stopped exactly. the. Um, they actually was. They granted him the the hold on it. Uh, if he can come up with the hundred and seventy four million dollars uh, to, uh, at, at the very least, admin the four hundred plus million. But again, that goes to the point of like structured racism. And this is what I was making a statement earlier. Um, even in criminality, there's racism. So when you have some of these quote unquote yeah. black faces that get very arrogant and cocky publicly, even at black folks, but to more importantly, what Luther Campbell says behind the scenes, you know, you know, Diddy can't make those connections behind the scenes like uh, what's going on with Trump right now. You know, Trump had a whole coup on the nation uh, concerning the Capitol Hills and the riots. Right. Um, but because relationships is what runs the world not simply money but the relationships are more important then you see right. him able to have more real estate and freedom with his criminal hood versus the likes of diddy well let the industry let this be known though trump gave the people what he wanted you yes. saw who he put on the supreme court, court yes like he did <laughs> at least some some of the promises he gave to his people did he never gave any promises back to his people he so your people that. people don't have the they, they don't have to did he out here giving fight herpes. and defend something yes, that's giving what did he did he giving niggas herpes right. allegedly i don't know yeah, that's a whole new story. <laughs> but yeah um, to these industry trump, niggas oh, wait go ahead you go ahead first i was just gonna say trump gets the credit but mitch mcconnell is the one who built that court mm-hmm. and leonard leo is the owner and operator of the Supreme Court, but well, that's a whole nother you right topic for a whole other. <laughs> you right. No, no, I like I like these conversations. These are conversations we gotta have because people well, gotta know about the back door. Well, well, that's the Dallas education system right there. Now. <laughs> that's the that Dallas school system. <laughs> Great school system. Shouts out to Dallas. Yeah, I know I finished up the last Shouts few years of school out there. D I S D triple D. There you go. <laughs> All right, you know, you at the Dirty South Rider, DSR. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. Well, then. I just want to say thank you guys for uh, taking my call. Mm-hmm. I've been watching y'all for like several years now on um, YouTube. I okay. love your channel. And I follow y'all on Twitter. Mm-hmm. Y'all keep doing y'all thing. We appreciate you. We appreciate you. We love so, you too. All right. Peace. Thank y'all. All, all right. right. So shouts out to uh, shouts out to the DF Dub for that was bringing the fire. Yeah, the dirty Fort Worth, man. You know, Tum Tum, Big Tuck, all them boys out there. This Caprice music. All right. So the number is on the screen right now. We do have the lines open for a few more calls. Nine zero three six hundred zero five three zero. I know a few people tried to call in. Um, so we'll take look, one or two more, like Prince said. Look, you know, I mean, I'm just being honest with y'all. As far as the criminal hood goes, there's racism there, you know, and you you can't look. You have to understand what the game is. That's why it's mm, it's interesting. It's kind of like what Fifty said about Meek Mill when Meek Mill was going at Drake, but then he started dissing Ar Ab in his own backyard, and I thought that was a stupid move. But you know, when you allegedly peeled up and coked up and inebriated and just debaucherous you don't have the clearest thinking as a general 
you know so you know some of the things diddy was doing just didn't make sense to me like him trying to put his hand on every new popular artist that was coming in and mind you all these aren't you know this isn't mims you know this isn't you know the stanky leg shouts out to dallas and everything but this isn't you know like soldier boy little boys like these are you know, these are premier artists like, you know, uh, Kendrick and J. Cole and Drake. And, you know, Diddy was out here putting his hands on folks. Also, you don't feed your people. You saw what happened with the hyenas Welcome. at the end of the Lion King with Scar, goofy Friends. ass. Friends. All right, caller, uh, name and where you're from. Yo, what's up? J.S. Georgia. Georgia in the building. What's up? What's your thoughts on all what this? What part of Georgia? You said what? What part of Georgia? Where you at? What part of Georgia? Griffin. <laughs> All right, man. Let's go. What you got? <laughs> <laughs> I know where you at, but go ahead. <laughs> yeah, man. I just want to say, um, I'm looking at. Uh, I saw. I heard, I heard one of y'all mention the pot quash, pot quash shoot was earlier. I'm looking at this shit totally. You know, fifty was out here say uh, Jimmy Hitchman got paperwork. Mm-hmm. Obviously, you know, Pac was saying Haitian Jack got paperwork. Mm-hmm. Diddy obviously working with Clive Davis and all them. So I think. A lot of people these days know the industry at the highest level, highest, highest level is run by Massad and CIA. There you go, uh, man. I'm glad right, you said that. Go ahead, continue. Uh, right now, it seems like uh, that Pac-94 quad shooter was just them having their little street puppets, you know. they What's that little, uh, that white nigga in Boston that uh, he was like an Irish mafia, but he the, the feds were letting him run the Irish mafia because he was snitching on his ops. Oh yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you now? Did you? You heard what Napoleon said? Napoleon said when Tupac got shot, and one of the homeboys, was, you know, was trying to get back at one of the shooters. He said he runs out of the studio, and then right there is a squad car. He said, and there was an officer just sitting in the car. The officer heard the shooting. He saw the men run out, and the officer looked up at one of Pac's homeboys and simply smiled. Yeah, and you got you got to keep in mind this. What three years after Dan Quills called for him to be censored publicly? Yes, and about three months after he uh he got in that shootout with the with, with the pigs in Atlanta. Yeah, he, so, you know, he was on the radar after that. He was on the radar after that. Actually, before you remember, uh, Phoebe Shakur was a part of the Panther Twenty One. She was eight months. Well, pregnant. yeah, no, no, no. You're right about that, but you know it's it's different. Like um, you know how some people like you got some people like actually you got some people that are descendants of Black Panthers that are actually operating in hip hop, but not trying to be funny, they act like some Sambos. Whereas with yeah. Tupac, they was monitoring him, but when the, the cop shooting happened in Atlanta, like they knew for sure, like this uh, is a militant nigga. Yeah, this nigga was smacking <laughs> yeah, shit back. out of them. <laughs> <Back. laughs> well, but go yeah, ahead, man. You know, I'm just, I'm just, go ahead. Yeah, I'm looking at, uh, uh, you know, this puffy shit, just, just looking at it all crazy, you know, looking at the Pac's quad shooting crazy. I saw, uh, it seemed like they were just trying to create the environment yeah. for the nigga to get hit. So when uh, when Vegas happened, yeah. I'm not saying they, I'm not saying maybe it was the crypt niggas that pulled the trigger, but the environment of that yeah, was, bro, was, hey, was listen, you, the you well, know your history, man, because that that's a part of how disrupting. Uh, those are high disrupting frequency programs. And I'm just gonna say, also, I'm glad you brought that up because now with all this shit going with Diddy, you know. Keefe D, he got something to go on now. He could be like, yo, this nigga hired me. <laughs> well, Diddy didn't pay attention to nothing. Yeah. <laughs> Keefe D got arrested. That should have told him something. He got arrested. Diddy still came out, was flexing in people's faces. Well, this is where I agree with Strategy King, too. You got a dumb woman on your end. You and, and, and Young Miami partying it up, not looking at the warning signs. Doing dumbass videos, act bad. <laughs> got high heels yeah. in his mouth. This is a dumb nigga. <laughs> Fuck all that act bad shit, baby. Why, what we about to do? We about shit. to lay low right now. We getting all the kids, everybody. We going on the private jet. We getting out of here. Shit, they just arrested <laughs> Keefe D. I don't know what that stroke victim is gonna say. <laughs> yeah, we were on the. St- I think everybody know. Uh, Diddy put the bounty on Death Row chains. That's why Park Barber in Orlando because he tried to snatch some shit earlier that day. But uh. I mean, word on the street is he had a bead on his head too. So I mean, shit. Well, you know what's crazy if you if you think about the uh, the Tupac situation, you know, um, think about all of the key players are dead. All of the key players are dead. You know, and then think about how many times did he lie to us? 
and, and that we can even show on record, right? Diddy said, I never said nothing about Tupac. You know, he was just angry at us, and I don't I don't even know why he came. I never dissed him. You know, you'll never hear track. And then y'all heard there's a diss track by Diddy called Stop Yapping. And it's yeah, him. Yeah, that mixtape. Yeah, he's just talking all over the Tupac, uh, hit him up freestyle. You know, so... Again, uh, look, a lot of craziness that goes on in the, that whole space. And even the fact that uh, one of the Southside Crips had produced an album and Snoop Dogg's people worked with them. I mean, just, so, yeah. I mean, that's that's I mean, not no Prince Solomon conspiracy. You guys can look it up yourself that Snoop Dogg was able to work with uh, one of the South Side Crips. Well, that's why that I was think, uh, tied to the uh, Tupac shooting. That's why I think even 20 years ago, Diddy was dumb. Anytime you got people who know what you did alive still and you think you secure with your handlers and, and your um, the higher ups, how are you still secure? And there's other people running around that still know what you did and that could still. Uh, affect you when it comes to popular opinion and in the court of law. So I do think the the rumors are true with Diddy being a playboy, just playing all around, just fucking and all that other stuff. Because if you had any sense, you would have been more. You would have taken this shit more serious. No, and, and Carly, you, you you wonderful man. And I'll just say this to add on to what you're saying about the the Diddy thing. Um, the, the, you know, I always say the biggest record label in hip hop is the government. Um, but yeah. that being the case, like even even some of our greats, like um, you know, when Nas did his incredible six album run, I loved it. But when he said Death Row East, and he had one line on there that I just like, my face twisted up. I was like, eh, why did you put that on there? When he said, you know, uh, Stretch had nothing to do with Tupac getting shot in the Quad Studio. But then you have people, um, you have interviews from very important people online that said, no, we're, you know, Big Stretch was paid allegedly in a brick of cocaine to drop the location of Tupac or what time he was going to pull up or at least set it up to where he can get robbed. And Napoleon says it himself. He says, look, I don't know exactly what the details or he said he wasn't there, but he said Tupac always felt funny how quick Stretch laid down on the ground when they had stuck him up. So just even... Like, you know, some of the Lucy affiliates, like there seems to be this constant narrative that like Tupac was just this isolated, lone, crazy nigga that just had a bad attitude with everyone. That's you what the what media, saying? that's the whole point of what Uncle Luke said. And, and uh, when it came to Tupac's case back in the, in the 90s, he made, because, of, you know, a lot of black people weren't really paying attention this deeply at that time. They made him look like just a crazy nigga. And that's what people took him for until later. They was like, oh, now we see why. Pac was acting the way he was acting in that industry. Like, what the call said, Mossad agent, CIA, Fed. Like, it's it's a lot going on. Look at, look at, and then you look at what was revealed, you know. Um, you know, the night that, you know, Tupac got shot in the Quad Studios. You know, they, you know, they said that, you know, Andre Harrell was there. Puffy was there. They said Biggie didn't even <laughs> know Puffy was there. Because Puffy was yeah, there. Yeah, I remember just, listening. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I remember listening to his, uh, his interview with Sway during the East West shit. Pac said half of the New York niggas in the industry has somebody in that in that studio that night, whether management, crew. And I think about Pros, you know, Pros being FBI. What Pac say? I heard the Fuji tried to do me. So right, he was he was shit. referencing, yeah, because he was I'm referencing. Glad you brought that up. <laughs> yeah, because he was referencing the whole situation concerning Haitian Jack. You know, and then everybody uh, was exactly surprised. Then yeah. y'all guys remember just last year, everyone was surprised that Proz was shown as a federal agent. Come and on, people like bro. everything, but yeah, everybody needs to just go back and listen to Tupac music. Yeah. The nigga was right about everybody he went, he tried to go to war with. And what did they say that night uh, where uh, the other people was in the room with Andre Harrell? Because Andre Harrell, they said that he didn't like Tupac personally. Uh -huh. And then also Diddy was there. And then uh, I believe it was Henchman. Jimmy Henchman. Henchman said he they they said that Henchman told both Diddy and Harrell get ready because they were supposed to. They knew that Tupac was supposed to get done up. So they said I'm gonna teach him a lesson. Right now, the crazy part about all of this is that Proz has been exposed as a federal agent. Right then they talked about feds were running in and out of both death row and bad boy records and let's not forget why clef connection to the clintons and what's been and and, and what took place with Haiti and back what's then. alleged and we can't say it here on youtube but you guys go research of what has been alleged about 
White Cliff. That you know. Oh yeah. yeah. That, okay, somebody Y'all go look that up. The Pied Piper doesn't stop there, right? Wendy Williams talked a little bit Wendy about it. Wendy talked. And that's why I said it's funny. It's mighty funny that Wendy, you know, you know, got all these shakes and shit going on. But she, for a long time, has been saying a lot of this stuff, and you know, her career had been railroaded. But she got a, she had a tough code about her. No, to you your know? point, if she was physically healthy right now, everything she said that she kept it kind of like in cold when she said it. She would have been just saying it plainly right now, unlike, you know, some, some other people who are still hiding and being yeah. slick with it. Yeah, so, no, Carly, you're not right. You, I mean, you're not wrong about it. I mean, you, you write about the whole notion that Tupac was saying this 20-plus years ago. Yeah, man. I, yeah, and, uh, you know, I don't want to keep up too much of your time. I got one last thing, man. Yeah. You know, T.I. was my favorite rapper in elementary, so I got mm. I always have a little soft spot. Mm-hmm. So can we give? Can we at least give a little prop for the affordable house that he he built on the west side? I Mr. don't I, I, look. I do fuck house. with. I, look, let me tell you something about Ti. Unfortunately, because I, I grew up in Atlanta, man. There's a lot of dope shit that Ti does do in the city. You know that's why if you ever hear, I just like I just cook him on the like the the people telling boycott Gucci and like nigga, yeah he act goofy I ain't gonna take yeah, that away yeah he, yeah, he, he goofy, goofy you, goofy you know it's a weird nigga you know I mean, I'm not gonna lie to you even when I saw him in person I'd say he's strange to me but um I don't know that's but that's that's old South shit that's old community shit because um it, it's it's about where you compromise that I'm gonna yeah. be honest with you because yeah. yeah. Ti. Um, even if you kind of, we'll talk. Sin and I will talk more about this Drake and Future thing because uh, one of the things that Future was irritated with Drake about is that when he did the Tony Montana and then Drake just hopped on it and then he was all right, then we can make it an official single. I'll lead off with it. You show up to the video shoot. Drake didn't show up to it. Future was mad because he was like, "Damn, I could have gave an artist in Atlanta that shine versus this, you know, this outsider, you know." And I, you know, the dude kind of trying to play with me a little bit, right? Like. In yeah. Atlanta, you'll see people that'll try to keep things within the community. So when T.I., you know, we even covered it. Like, I covered it. I said, you know, I think it's dope what he's doing for the West Side because we, we know what goes on over there. But on the other side of it, um, I think some of the stupid behavior that some of us do when we get certain types of power puts us in a situation where we can become someone's puppet. Right, because when, when, when I was in freshman year in high school and T.I. came out, I just thought he was fly. Like, even yeah. with the King album and all that, and, you know, he had the culture, but he made two big mistakes. Like, the first mistake was the the, the Crime Stoppers, but then people try to be like, you Back. know what, maybe there's something we don't know, so they try to be fair to him. But let me tell you where the real death happened, because he's a Libra dude. He had a lot of power over a lot of fucking females. I even had my white uh, fucking teacher had the hots for him. So... When he did the Iggy thing, though, he could just, he just, <laughs> it yeah, was, that was it was done like, if that's your little hole, like, behind the scenes, that's fine, but you gotta understand this is about the culture, and people see you about the culture, look, you married to Tiny, you know, you bought the whole black scene, so, man, let me tell when you he something did the real Iggy quick. shit, it was just, it was just done. And the crazy part about it, yeah, player, that was you know. Iggy's music wasn't even snapping like that. It wasn't even yeah, a white girl who could rap. It, 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 her music wasn't even <laughs> snapping like that. Like when he finally went and got Tokyo Jets, I'm like, but nigga, you should have did that the first time. When you had the clout. You know what I'm saying? Like, because Tokyo Jets, I mean, she, I don't know where she at now, but I mean, when she was on that track, Friends and Grand Hustle niggas, they were all flipping each other's flow around. I was like, damn, nigga, you should have did this before. Yeah, yeah that's you all. Know? It's like kind of like Bad and Bougie, one of the, the Migos' biggest hits. It's, it's, of course, the flow is hot and all that, but they had hot ass black chicks in there. Like, people like to see around the world, they like to see authentic black culture. But it's, that's it's what two they want to see. It's two things. Like, I'm going to be honest with you all. People can say whatever they want to say. T.I. can say whatever you want to say. Come on, player. You was out there too. You know damn well. That fucking Iron Man, Tony Stark's military grade weaponry looks so strange to us. I looked at some. Yeah, did you see? Was, that shit was crazy. Nigga had. Yeah, I was a kid when it happened, but you know, every time I look back on it and read on it, I, you know, I guess I, I listened to his raps. He was saying some shit was going down with all the folks coming from New Orleans or whatever, but still, oh, man, come like, on, that man. level. Let's be real, bro. Well, he wow. was getting shot at a lot. Right, so, but I mean. Nah, nah, fuck all that. Let me tell you what's going on. Here's the thing, bro. You know about it. 
Because remember, T.I. got fucked up when he went out of town and he was throwing that chair yeah. in that VIP section. Bad. And they had them gang, they had them real made niggas in that section. And his homeboy got shot up in that truck. The problem is yeah. T.I. got a Scorpio in Mars. That's a hot-headed nigga. T.I. is a hot-headed uh, nigga. He blamed that shit on the New Orleans niggas. Now, where I was at on the west side, the niggas, it was a dope trafficking gang. Niggas were shooting. But T.I. lived way up in the hills. If they said, P., why you walking around with that thing on you like that? Well, look where I live at. T.I. didn't live where we was living at. T.I. was way up in the hills. You know, so when he went yeah. out there and did that shit, he had them guns with the, all them semi-automatic with the drums up under there. All that shit. People are like, brother, where were you going with all this and, shit? And then also, he's a Libra. And so he's a seven-time felon. Think about that. Seven-time felon. Yeah. He, he's also a Libra. So the problem with T.I. is when he loses balance, he doesn't understand, like, it, it makes him lose his aura. Like, when we heard about him stopping people from doing suicide, okay, it's, a, it's okay if you thug in a little bit, whatever, that's fine. Getting your money on the side or women are into you, that's all, that's all right. But when he, when you started to get reports of him going completely dark and these allegations of sexual assault, you already got women who are into, so why even those allegations are coming out? It's just like, there's a lot of things that happen that kind of ruin the the energy of what people, like, people really thought T.I. Well. was about about that life to some degree of people forget yeah, like can't... Georgia Frank Sinatra yeah, or yeah. yeah. well T.I.'s brand and it might be understated but T.I.'s brand was conviction and authenticity that's how he won yeah. against Lil Flip and balance of the light and dark and authenticity so people just felt he was thorough and he had wrapped all this stuff now look when I saw the guns to some degree Look, I was there when New Orleans, when the whole Katrina situation happened. Not going to lie, depending on what neighborhood you was in, you did hear guns going off every day. Well, Lauf said the guns was so, for Shorty Low. You, do you, what do you think about that? That gun, Shorty Low wasn't studying that nigga like that. <laughs> I'm going to be real with you. Start, how you feel about a... Yeah, only thing Shorty Low... A, yeah, all Shorty Low wanted to tell people is that he ain't from my neighborhood. Stop saying Bowen Holmes. <laughs> All right. That's all he wanted to say. Carl, Carl, what, but go what, ahead. what did you say? You was about to say too. What you think the guns was for? I was gonna say, uh, you know, Young Thug. I feel, even though he, I feel like he lied a little bit in the interview because yeah. these, these street rappers exaggerated shit. Right. But Young Thug said that uh, Tip was buying his neighborhood was one of the neighborhoods Tip was buying guns for. To handle there that, you that go. Now you're shit. talking. Like, now you're talking. I wasn't gonna yeah. say it because I let you say it. But let's be real. All of those guns. What do you look like to me? You look like a dealer. Yeah. Because that's the conversation they don't want to have. I keep saying people have the wrong conversation when they're having that conversation. Yeah, and I do think the underworld do need to really clean up because, you know, the black underworld is taking a lot of L's because, like, when y'all... Y'all try to, it's like when we talked about the John Morant thing. We was like, John Morant is supposed to be the clean money. He shouldn't be associated with none of it. He got to be straight. And we just think that sometimes, you know, sometimes the people in the underworld, when we talk well, about well, black... See, you're not going to lay out no criminal plans. Okay, you're right. <laughs> I don't want no... No, you're right. See, I don't want nobody... Do. No, you know what? What you're not going to do. I don't want it all to be right because feds and stuff, you know, what the fuck this bitch doing? <laughs> Shut Get up. them two niggas. <laughs> no, you're right. No, but that no, will be a discussion for another time. But Carla, I think you brought up uh, some some wonderful points. They, uh, hey, remember? I mean, you know, player, because you've been out there too. Look what Shawty Lowe said before his untimely death. You know, they asked him. They said, "Hey, man, did you and Tip piece it up?" He said, "Yeah, man. You know, we piece it up." And then the guy said, "Hey, man, you think y'all can work it?" Shawty Lowe still said, "He says, nah, I can't respect him." Mm-hmm. Look, I, I'm and not that here. hurt Ti so. I, I, I felt I'm, when he was talking I, about Ti, felt hurt when people start saying he wasn't thorough anymore. I, I, look, I'm not here to say anything you else. Care. Yeah, yeah, and look, I, I'm. It is what it is, but <sighs> I mean, it's some funny shit going on. And all I know is that when I saw them guns, I know what that looked like to me. But that's another story. Yeah, for sure. Well, yo, man, I don't want to take up too much of y'all time. But I've enjoyed the stream and shit. So, uh. I appreciate the conversation y'all always bring, but y'all, I hate, I hate that y'all shadow bed. I want to start my own shit myself, but mm -hmm. you know, this is the perfect era. But you know, y'all, y'all give me a lot of inspiration. 
Man, you should. I mean, you're, you're very knowledgeable about hip hop. You already know what's going on with the crime scene, too. I, I think you should go go for it. You never know, you know, mm-hmm. building your own brand, uh, even if it's just a hobby for side money. Yeah, man. Do you think, player, you got all the information out there? And I'm going to be honest with you. With some of them people that are kind of tied to some of that goofiness out there, man, you know, you, you're a thorough player, so you should bring that a different light to the city out there because they got a lot of people kind of confused about uh, the 404, and you should, you know, since you got real detail out there, you know, get on the microphone, man. Tell them what this is. And we need more people from the South and other parts of the United States that know about this game and won't get caught up in that facade and other stuff. Like, you have the knowledge to remain independent and really, really build something. So you one of the people that need to go out there and, and, and make it happen. All right, bro. Uh, thank y'all, man. Y'all have a good night. You too. Yeah. Um. Look, folks, uh, I don't think – you're not going to hear the end of this. I mean, it may not show up later on that is the face of Diddy, but pay attention to some of your key players in the industry. They're going to be getting their coke pool because Diddy is a valuable asset and a weapon that is more than likely willing to tell. You know, and, and it, honestly, there is no victory for him to come back. People acting like, you know, this is an O.J. Simpson trial. Like, you know, I didn't kill the white girl, and now, you know, I'm back on TV. <laughs> it, that's not, not with this situation. They said he has more stuff. He has so many pending lawsuits right now. The best thing for Diddy to do is, is at least beat the, the more important things and try to leave the country. Right, and they say this with David Banner blocking us. Look, I know at one time T.I. liked our show. And, like, I'm not – we never lied. We love T.I.'s music. It's just that – just certain things he just didn't stay on his square with that I it's it's just the last thing I'll say on this. People, even if you look at astro in, into astrology, there's a parts in people charts where they have a lot of power. And the only way for that power to be taken away is if you betray yourself. It's kinda of like when we talk about Samson when he betrayed himself, uh you know, he knew he wasn't t- supposed to tell that hoe about his fucking dreads, and he did it anyway, and she cut it while he was asleep. Like, a lot of these guys, like T.I. and um, they had the culture authentically, but when they when they be doing certain things that they know portray their cold, or maybe they don't know, because to be fair to people, you know, a lot of people um, mainstream-wise is really starting to get into a- astrology recently and stuff because of the awakening and everything, but... Um, you know, a lot of people don't understand their code and they betray their intuition. And then once they do that, they lose a lot of their power. So, you know, with T.I., it's not personal. Even with David Banner, it's not personal or any of these people. It's just oh, no, that, with David Banner, it was personal for me. Oh, yeah. Well, he yeah. that's because he did the thought crime thing, yeah, trying to yeah, steal yeah, the no, thing. That was no, that's personal. And you a Southern nigga. You know better. Yeah, he knew better You got to set up there on drink champs and right. kicked all that stuff. But when people aren't trying to steal from thought crimes, yeah. it's not personal. You know, we are part of the culture and, you know, T.I. and the rest of these guys are part of the culture, too. But, you know, when they betray themselves, you know, we got to tell the truth, man. You know, I don't know what um, just to say this. I, I just say, look, it is what it is. Diddy is in trouble now. And I do feel a lot of the people that even some of you all love, like I love what the last caller said. You know, he said he has a soft spot for T.I. You know, not not in a funny way, but, you know, you got to think about it. You know, these people made some of the soundtracks to a lot of people's lives, including Diddy. Why you want to go and do that? Right. That's what I said. You know, the social engineering, there can be positive and negative versions of it. But this is where you get cognitive dissonance. You know, when people think about Diddy going away permanently, you know, they immediately think about, you know, ready to die. They may think about the get money trick. They may think about Roe with him and Black Rob. They may think about Loon Records, Usher Records. They may think about the R&B. And I, I completely understand. I Listen, I'm, I'll be the last person to tell you that you shouldn't intrinsically feel art. I'm not, I'm not one of these people that'll do that. However, though, I do come from another perspective where um, there's a bit of a detachment for me personally just experiences growing up and the things that and people i tend to had admire uh, that were uh, affecting the community directly you know people in you know the backyard when i was growing up at the boys and girls club with somebody like mr jackson i don't know if he's passed or not but i'm just saying you know people that i used to see that had real grit in the communities uh and i was always educated of you know these people in my face you know, sacrificing their time with their, you know, their their husbands and wives and children to help out children that weren't even their own. That, you know, pretty much the community didn't even claim, right? Versus an entertainer. 
Y'all are too and, selfish. Y'all got yeah. too selfish. So, yeah. So, you know, um, I do say this, though, and especially if you continue to study history, ladies and gentlemen. You guys should look up a, a, a very interesting phenomenon in Hollywood called Laurel Canyon. And hip hop today is today's Laurel Canyon. And I'll say that because there's a lot of strange things where you have the intersectionality of entertainment and the military industrial complex at a hegemony here in hip hop today, especially with the military technology known as the Internet. And I have a basic understanding, like somebody some years ago said, well, these black entertainers can't give back to the community because if they can, they're going to be watched more. No, no, no. Look. Like Bill Cosby or not, he survived by the hair of his chitty chin chin because people still, even though they didn't like the uh, pound cake speech, he still has been known of giving to a lot of black people and building things from scratch. Um, a lot of you guys won't make it because you, you still people publishing, you try to be on you your say they, they don't do the investment, even though yeah. whether you dislike Bill Cosby or not, if you pay attention to his history, he is a part of a lot of the major first black right. this in Hollywood. Like, I think one of the first black makeup artists was because of Bill Cosby. You cannot have an army if you if you aren't building and feeding your people. And they will never respect you or help you. Bill Cosby still had enough black people who supported him, despite whether you feel he's guilty or not, because of giving back. Y'all selfish niggas, when them white people pull your cars, is going to be it because you're not giving enough. Everybody know the game. If Jay-Z right now did something big and grand for the black community, you know, that would be in his favor. If any of these niggas did that, you know, if, instead of people trying to say, oh, this is a black man, we can't, we can't take him down. No, how about start telling these dudes to give back to their community if they want support? It cannot be one-sided. We'll say this, and we, we're winding down here, ladies and gentlemen. This has been wonderful, but I, I definitely want to add on to what she said, and it's this, look. You know, when DJ NB said, you know, well, well, why this about Harvey Weinstein, this and a third? Because, look, let's be real. Look, with all these other groups of people, is it necessarily perfect? No. Do they have beefs? Absolutely. I disagree with people say, well, the white podcasters, like Godfrey said, the white podcasters don't beef with you. That's a lie. I don't know not, what, what not, I don't know what that Nigerian know, was talking about. I don't know what you're talking about, Muscle Face, but I do see a lot of white podcasters getting into it. I saw but Alex Jones trying to tell talk about uh, Joe Rogan, Joe yes. Rogan, Black Dog. But here's the thing: the problem is this: networking completely across the board is an A plus for them. It's a major talking point. Let's be real. The black class, the black celebrity class, as you see it, is a very exclusionary class. They are overtly exclusive. They will include themselves into a lot of the quote unquote black commoners shenanigans and, and, and movements and, and even inspiration and, and innovations because the innovations start from the ground up. Right. But then at a certain point in time, they make it very clear. Oh, you all are excluded this is where i dismiss you all and the reason why I, when people was online saying why y'all seeing jay-z look i'm not saying anybody but what i will say as far as calculating goes hi <laughs> sin and i we did say we're passing nearly in such a very dismissive manner and then you turn around and you give black people j-lo and shakira to perform and J-Lo been alleged. Yeah. Why ain't J-Lo being talked about? She was at them parties, too. Well, she still with met Brian ben, uh, Benny Medina. The Latino community is starting right. to call her out, though. Go she's ahead, Puerto still Ricans. With, she's still with Benny Medina. Go look up the history of Benny Medina. So, and also, real quick, if y'all Puerto Ricans... When you're talking about Jay-Z, just to put this out there, one of the reasons why people are looking at Jay-Z, because I, as I said, and I said, we said that we pass an ill, and whether you agree with Kaepernick or not, the way Jay-Z did it, I said, that's going to forever diss. That's way worse than any ether record could have done to him. And then also just add to that for the Puerto Ricans, if y'all want to start your media out right now, y'all need to start on J Lo because she a part of this shit too. Well, you heard what they said allegedly, right? I mean, now people are coming forward and saying, "Well, she brought the gun into the club that Puffy shot." Allegedly. Allegedly. That's why right, for my Puerto Ricans who tired of J Lo talk about, I'm still Jenny from the block. Y'all need to open. You need to put some, put the microphones out and start talking about that. 
Why don't they call her Jenny with the Glock? <laughs> Glock. Glock Jenny. Used to shoot a little, now I shoot a lot. <laughs> Look, it, it's just that simple. I, I get it, There is racism, but there's also just stupidity. If you already have a situation and the dynamics and the pathology of something as racism or racism in the industrial complex of entertainment, right? Then why would you spend most of your time breaking the souls of black artists? Like, why would that be like, why would you want that to be a part of your mythology? And Diddy was comfortable with it. Yeah, you could have had a hundred thousand black men to stand up for you. Uh, 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 thousands, millions. And you for over 20 years, no one vouches for you. That's your problem, my nigga. Obviously, you was a horrible leader. That's why when it comes to leadership, if nobody's following you, don't blame the black community because you suck. Yeah, so, you know, um, I think it's interesting. I actually, I absolutely disagree with a lot of the other personalities that are saying, you know, you know, why, why are we egging this on? Black folks ain't egging this on. And stop making this, stop finding ways to make black people the villain instead of the predators that are actually hurt folks. I have, even like I said with the Breakfast Club, coming out and saying, well, you know, black folks, and it seemed like why we do this to us, nigga. Nigga, I went at them white fingernail parties. All right, you know, you people ain't got their women out here uh, having them smelling like urine when they come out of an executive's office. So I want that to be understood. This has look, there's racism, of course, but there I keep saying there's genuine stupidity. So that's like you being in the ring. Yeah, that's like, like you being in the ring. That's like you being in the ring with Mike Tyson. Prime Mike Tyson And then you start punching yourself too That's what some of these people are doing Alright folks On that note we, we love y'all We appreciate y'all And we are out Peace
Get that son of a bitch off the field right now. Out. He's fired. He's fired! I saw the check, nigga. <laughs> Why do you give a fuck? Where's the kaboom? There was supposed to be an earth-shattering kaboom. If he dies, he dies. I'll beat you on the mall. And don't bother me.